Hello, folks. I'm on bright and early today because I want to hurry up and get uh, get this new character started before nine o'clock. All right, new game. Man, it's been a while since I've done this. New game, it is. Let's go. I think I'm gonna play Nora today. I don't ever do that, but I've heard been hearing Nate for too long. It's time for a change of voice actor. Sound is good, thank you, Jason. Echo happening. Uh oh. Is anybody else hearing an echo? War never changes. You're gonna knock him dead at the veterans hall tonight, hun. You think? I wonder if the game if my Absolutely. No, I got... There's no... Now get ready and stop hogging the mirror. Right. Hmm, what's going on with my mic? Let's see here. Settings. Audio. Let's do, let's change this up. Let's go audio. Desktop audio will be this. Our mic audio is going to be this. Is it still echoing? Because I, I can see like my, you know, my mic is spiking a little bit from my desktop audio, which is weird. No echo for Quester, no echo for Keldane. Sorry, Lori, seems like just you. All right, let's switch over to, got it. I don't even know how to do it. Why, okay. <laughs> and you guys know me, I don't usually bother with customizing, customizing the characters. I don't, I'm not super concerned with it because I play in first person, so I don't care what my character looks like. Even though I guess I should because I do go, you go into um, third person for dialogue cam all the time, but. I don't know. To me, the the character faces, the default, those are the voices. So like, ah, feels awkward whenever I switch them. Your coffee, one hundred and seventy three point five degree Fahrenheit, brewed to perfection. And today's newspaper just delivered. Thanks, Codsworth. Oh, there we go. Oh. Grognak the Barbarian and the Jungle of the Bat Babies. <laughs> A lot of late nights, but it was worth it. Come on over here, Vault Tech Rep. Deep Dive Gaming. Sorry to drop this in on you right out of the gate, but I ran into an issue with War is Good for Business where I should be able to recruit all factions, but BOS was missing. Interesting. Um, well, not not a good time to uh, send me those kind of bug reports. If you want to... Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't remember if you have access to the Git or not, but uh, you could post uh, post some details on uh, on Discord if you like. Um, I think um, the war was all of the, the that whole quest. The war is good for business. Should have a lot of objectives around there. So I don't know if the uh, objective isn't coming up or, or what's going on with it. But that one's a pretty complicated quest. Sorry, radio. Am I supposed to talk to... Hey, hon. We should take Codsworth to be serviced soon, don't you think? There is not a limit on the number of factions. You can go... You can get all of them if, uh, if you do the right quests and everything. Uh, it's that sales... Good morning! vault -Tec calling! Uh, good morning. Good morning. Isn't it? Just look at that sky out there. <clears throat> you can't begin to know how happy... Uh, all right, I'm let's power through this. We're not we're not here for listening to the so middle story again from this point. Time. Time being, uh -huh. I'm yep, here yep, to... yep, we know. Thank you. Sounds great. Oh, it is. I just need to verify some. No, mod hunter, I'm still like anti mod right now because I want to have very, absolute clean saves for troubleshooting. Like that's it's been so valuable over the last. Not, I mean, God, we've been doing been playing this. Uh, doing this live stream for a year now, and I've fixed so many bugs because of it. Like I just don't want to give that up. Maybe one day I'll change my tune, but right now I'm just very happy uh, being able to fix tons of Michael, bugs off of these playthroughs. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, sorry. Sure, let's do it. Splendid. Splendid. Now, uh, let's see. Ah, joke's on you, Jason. I can name all of my characters the same. I name my character. I use my use uh, my character have uh, the same. They get called by their last name. Is the way I look at it. So, if I could uh, get this to work, name there it goes. So, she can be king too. Uh, let's see here. What am I doing with this character? Um, 
I, so we end up bypassing the charisma limit, so that becomes less important. Uh, let's see. Am I focusing on anything in particular? Maybe just for fun, I'll do um, the what's the low what's the low intelligent what's the, what score of luck do you have to have to have that the dummy perk? Is it four or is it six? What is it where I got to get the one where I get more XP for for low intelligence? That's a fun one to do. I'll do some endurance. Uh, I should do vats too if I'm gonna do luck. I need five. Okay. Uh, I guess I can go. I can do a luck perception build. I can go a vats build. I haven't done that. And I, you guys saw how, see how bad I am at combat, so that might be a good idea. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna do a little bit of strength. So super low charisma, uh, low intelligence, going in on luck perception. I, I just like endurance for the uh, the uh, action point draining. Uh, this feels good enough for me. I don't actually. I'm terrible with remembering the perk chart, so I'm just gonna go with Wonderful. close enough. That's everything. Uh, just gonna walk this over to the vault. Congratulations on being prepared for the future. Um, thanks again. Hey. Yeah, idiot's vault. That's what I was thinking of. That's worth a little paperwork, right? For you and Sean, no price is too high. <laughs> Good answer. Got a name for Queen Gaff. I think I've done that before. But then I don't get Codsworth to say my name. See, it's my last name. Codsworth knows what's up. Go ahead, honey. I'll be there in a second to help, okay? There we go. Uh, Darius, easy mode is because I am going to put boy, Sim Settlements 2 in trouble. what's called automated mode, where almost all of the management is handled for you, and you just get to focus on making things look pretty and doing story stuff. So very little, like, micromanagey stuff, and anywhere where you want to do it, it's like really dead. easy. Like, uh, the costs are all super Most easy to get, and uh, everything about Listen, the mod that would normally be, you know, people might look at it. Anybody who watched a lot, I would say the last, like, 10, 12 episodes of my playthrough probably thought Sim Settlements 2 was unnecessarily complicated. Um, and that's because there's a lot of, of management sim in it. You know, it's, it's based on the original inspiration with SimCity, and that's a very much a management sim. But we also built into SS2 the ability to play it like a more like SS1. SS1 okay. wasn't quite on that mark with the management sim. It was a lot simpler. Yeah, uh, and so like SS2, fun. we made it so you can kind of turn the whole thing into like a fully automated experience. Codsworth, what's wrong? Here we go. Followed by yes. Followed by flashes. Uh, no flashes. deep dive. There's not a way to export mod settings yet. That's one of those things where I've been wanting to do. There is a um. Someone showed me there's an MCM thing you can do with it where you can export mod your MCM settings and re-import them, but I don't know how it works or if it works with SS2 or not because we have a lot of, like, you do something in MCM and it triggers a script, and I don't know if that model support it, but if there is a there is a thing for MCM out there that will let you export your settings. So you should try it. I don't know if it works, but I'm sure you can find it on Nexus. Off we go. Residents of Sanctuary Hills. MCM Settings Manager, is that the name of it? I will show you guys what easy mode means once we get to the post war area. Actually, I'm going to wait till 9 o'clock. This is just kind of pre game. Get this character ready. We need to get in. We're on the list. Shoot the breeze with you guys, but nine o'clock I'll go Don't over kind of what what I have in mind Don't for this female. for this playthrough. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Other than I've I've on the moment What's decided gonna we're gonna do a VATS build. Because I don't think I've ever done a VATS build, to be honest with you. I just I'm so automatic. My my characters almost always end up the same. Um, I tend to just be like, I'm gonna go Almost sneak, there. sneak charisma, it's intelligence. Okay. It's just like this is what I'm drawn to. We're gonna be okay. I love you. Oh my God! <laughs> it's 9:42 for you, yeah. Nine o'clock my time, so that'll be in like 17 minutes. Right now we're just gonna get the early game over with. So hopefully by the time it gets to nine o'clock, we'll be sitting in sanctuary. Uh, with uh, with it ready to go. 
Yeah, Vats mode is pretty pretty. Vats is easy mode for sure. We made it. We're okay. Everyone, please step off the elevator and proceed up the stairs in an orderly fashion. No need to worry, folks. We'll get everyone situated in your new home. Vault. But yeah, we're after we do what. What I'm trying to do here is um, I'm about what I want to do for my next super long playthrough is going to be the opposite of this. It's going to be hardcore mode. I want to play like with the most brutally punishing settings with the, with one exception. Uh, I'm not going to turn on death for my settlers because that will keep setting us back over and over again. Um, but I'm going to play with all the other options on. Uh oh. I think we have to... We got to reboot. I, I see that I have... Crud. I see that I left chapter 3 active. <laughs> Oops. Starting over again. This is why we're pre game Let me make sure I don't have any other chapter 3 stuff. I just noticed something behind those characters. I don't know if you guys caught it, but there was something from chapter 3 behind, behind the people in the vault. Whoops. Restart. Hope you guys like listening to the vault tech rep. But anyway, I want to do a, um, a hardcore playthrough. And uh, before I do that, I want everybody who stumbles across my channel channel or is looking for information before they play SS2 to have access to like a pretty small playlist of like, here's how you can play it if you're nervous about adding more more um, gameplay mechanics. Like if you just want kind of a simple experience or for folks who, who just like, you know, they like the story of SS2 but have no interest in, you know, having a management sim on top of on top of Fallout 4, then they'll at least be able to quickly see how to do that. Because I don't think it's, until you get the holo tape. It's not intuitive, so if you were to just, like, judge the mod based on what you see I'm putting out there in content, it does look like the mod is excessively complex for somebody who just wants story, story stuff. Right. Any estimate on Chapter 3 release date? No, I don't have a estimate on that yet. We, um... Once, once we found out that uh, Starfield was delayed, we just, like, pumped the brakes and slowed ourselves down and decided to try and get our wish list of features in and do it all right instead of powering through to reach a november release which is what our original plan was actually we were going to try and release in october um but then and then we were going to end up having to cut a lot of features we wanted but instead we're we're getting to put a lot of cool features in and taking a little longer for development because I, I would really love to have um a rel you know i, I know we're never going to get to a bug free release it's, this engine is so complicated it takes years to get bugs worked out i mean the base game isn't even bug free um, but I would like it to be that most of you will be able to play through chapter three without it glitching on you. Um, that is, so we're, we're taking it a little slower, trying to do it, trying to do the chapter three justice. Cause it's going to be our final chapter for the, for the Jake storyline. So I want to make sure we, we're, we're doing good by you guys. Uh, and that's going to take some time because these making these big story mods and big systems mods on top of each other, it's, it's, it takes a ton of time. Just go turn off the radio while I'm wandering around. What's in the file cabinet? You will find out. I know we were nervous at first, but I'm glad we got Codsworth. This playthrough is a virtually with no mods. This is a playthrough we're using. There's a there's a link in the description for my mod list. It's basically I'm running a few FRSE mods like Place Anywhere and uh, something called Better Console, which lets me click on things. And I'm running Buff Out so that I don't have crashes from random random Todd things. Uh, and then we've got Workshop Framework, HUD Framework, SS2, Chapter 2, Extended, SS2 Extended, and Rise of the Commonwealth City Plan Pack. And that's it. And I might add some add-on packs to get some more variety in my building plans when we get going a little bit. But for now, I'm just running the bare minimum. Good morning, vault -Tec calling. Yeah, I'm going to show you guys all the settings. It's actually, most of them get set as soon as we grab the holotape. So what I'll probably do is once Isn't we it? get Just to Jake, I'll go do his first quest, because that way I can get the Quincy 5 to jumpstart our settlement. Um, and as soon as you load up the holotape, you get a you get an option to... Then I'm, I'm going to spam through all this. You get an option to, like with a little oh, wizard, to choose too. your base profile. And the automated profile from there will set up most of our settings how we want it. And then I'll probably pop into the settings menu and show you guys what we can set to make it even easier. Sounds great. There's probably, a, there, there are definitely a few things on my radar 
um, that probably for next patch, actually, I'm going to be adjusting which settings are set in each of the difficulty levels. Because I think there's we've got enough feedback now from, from the new mechanics that I have an idea of some of the stuff people... People find to be more hardcore than I intend than I thought were considered hardcore. So we'll move around some of the options. Sure, let's do it. Splendid, splendid. Now, uh, let's see. There we go. Uh, Mod Hunter Forty Two is it supposed to be in the pre-war vault? Yes, that is where it is meant to be. Um, I, if I don't know if you know what it is, but the the intention will be we don't actually want new players to use it, so we're putting it there so that they won't know what it is necessarily, or if they do, um, uh, we're, we're going to discourage, we're going to do everything we can to discourage new people to use it on their first playthrough because it makes things awkward. So um, it'll be one of those things where we'll give you an MCM access to it if you know what it is. So people who are in the know and kind of keep their uh, finger on the pulse will know what's up and know how to get it. And then uh, let's see what was our build. I don't remember exactly what our build was. Something like this. That feels about right. Sure. Wonderful. Um, thanks again. Hey, it's peace of mind. That's worth a little paperwork, right? For you and Sean, no price is too high. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's the idea. I want, I want the, uh, I want the Sanctuary Twelve right away. Nice way to jumpstart a settlement up. Sean has been changed, but he absolutely refuses to. Uh, we're gonna do both. T three K man, we're gonna do plots and city plans. Basically, like, what I generally do is I pick a settlement and I go go, ahead, honey. go crazy on it with manual building, and then I'll do the rest with city plans. But because this is going to be a lot quicker, like, the everything will happen faster just due to having all the settings on easy, um, I'll probably finish off a settlement pretty quickly. But we'll see, because I, I think this, my in my head, this series or this playthrough is going to last till the end of the year. And then we'll switch to another, and then we'll switch to hardcore uh, to start of next year. But... I'll, I'll take it as long as it needs to go to where I feel satisfied that I've showed you guys everything I wanted to show you and you know we've got a, a good amount of uh, good amount of on screen time showing the, the different easy options and the mechanics and how the different mechanics play in this easy mode so like the one thing I don't know that we'll actually get like I think we won't go so far as we get to HQ I, don't, I think I've already sh kind of shown you guys what easy mode HQ looks like that's just Turning off all the difficulty settings and turning on God mode, <laughs> and then just just spam build everything. Like that's what we did in the last episode of the other playthrough. Is just just spam it out, and you can have you can build the whole place in a setting. Yeah. So I like think fun. we'll stop short of HQ, but I would like to show off uh, mostly uh, get to all the other systems. So we'll need to get through the tech tree because we actually didn't get through most of the tech tree. We didn't touch commercial. We didn't do much in industrial. So there's some stuff I want to show you guys that we didn't do in last playthrough that'll be easier to show you in this playthrough. And then I got a list of uh, recruitable characters we never saw, so I'm going to figure out how to get those. I'll, I'll use the wiki to, to look up what I have to do. It's A lot of it's probably just me building certain things. Um, some of it might require me completing some vanilla quests, which is fine. I repeat, confirmed reports of nuclear detonations in New York and Pennsylvania. My God. Corey Pacino, what kind of mods should I completely avoid when playing SS2? Um... I mean, some of those mods that, like, completely redo the world, like Dust Bowl and stuff, are going to be problematic. And I guess it depends if you want to play with... If you want to play our story, our story, you should avoid those kind of overhaul, like, you know, completely revamping the world. Um, outside of, like, the season changes mods should be fine. But the ones that, like, you know... Uh, what's the other one? Frost? Is it Frostfall? Frost something or another. Or is it just called Frost? Like, those ones that kind of obliterate the world, those are going to ruin the story mode, but you could still probably use plots in them. Um, and then otherwise, we have a list on our wiki. If you go to wiki.simsettlements2.com, you will see there is a... Uh, come on, come on. Let's go. There is a list of uh, incompatible mods, like mods that just full-on break things for us. Adult male. Adult female. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Nick Carter, do you keep your saves from previous playthroughs? Yes, I have. I probably have like a terabyte of save files. I just back them all up to a folder and keep them on an extra hard drive. Because hard drives are cheap. Ma'am, we need to send you down to the vault. Step on the platform. Step on the platform. Come be sure, is there any chance the team is working on an overhaul of an area like Concord, but in the locations of Salem or Natick? After replaying 404, I realized just how many empty spots there are. Um, okay. No, we are definitely not doing that, but um, there that is something I would like to see. Not necessarily like what we did with Concord, but um, uh, 
at least putting the world repopulation doors in all those sections. It's some, one of those things where if like nobody in the community takes up that mantle, I'll eventually I'll just do it myself because I don't want to leave it. But I did put up tutorials so anybody who wants to like help, help make that happen, it's pretty easy to do. It just takes time. Um, just a lot of like placing down items and uh, uh, scouting out different locations and figuring out what building models they do. So it's just time. It's just a time sink to get it all working. We're okay. Something like Conquered, like that took a, a lot of people a lot of time to do, to do that little round of quests. Um, so we're focusing our efforts on our main quest now. That was just a lot like, um, anytime we put a new feature in the mod, we like to kind of explore it, explore it a little and kind of show what can be done and then put all the tools out there for other people to play with and see if they can do it. Like that's how we ended up with... All the different building plans from add-on packs. There's no way us on the team could have gotten that many done, as many done that exist now um, on our own. We just would have burned out before then. Okay, good. The cabinet's gone. So anyway, the world repop is, um, or the conquered thing was kind of an example of what if you took world re repop and then went crazy with it and like built a story around it and stuff. And and uh, the world repop system we can do in the whole game world, and we when we will. Um, but the the little stories that's very, very time consuming. It's gone. Our home. Everything we had. My mother and father down in DC. Godzilla, you guys worried about the Fall 4 update in 2023? No, I think it's going to be a lot less of an update than Skyrim Special Edition was. I think, um, I think the difference between, uh, so Skyrim and Fallout were effectively built on the same version of the creation engine, and Fallout 4 got some updates to it. And so they were able to take Skyrim and just and it was a pretty Just easy transition for them to get into get it to work with the Fallout 4 changes, but with Fallout 4 to Fallout 76, they can't really do that. It's a totally you know they had to do a totally different engine to to do all the multiplayer stuff. So I don't think they're actually giving us any of the benefits from 76, which means that whatever they're upgrading, they're probably just doing it in place. And I I think they're aware of. I think they're aware of the the problems it caused last time. I just don't think we're going to get anything that that advanced. Um, I think we're going to get minor updates like tech, you know, like the kind of they'll like build in the uh, what do you call them the um, the texture pack. What's it called? Uh, high res texture pack or, or something like that. Like I think it's it's going to be pretty minimal overall. That's what I'm anticipating. I think if it were going to be a big overhaul, they would have made that part of the announcement. Like if they wanted it to get everybody hyped about it. Uh, Lennon, do you play other games besides Fallout 4? Uh, on occasion. Um, I, I love me some creation engine games. So, like, I, I was recently playing, a, playing Skyrim. Um, uh, other games I occasionally play will be... I have to look at my Steam library or what I've been playing. I don't play much lately anymore. Um, I play a lot of Nintendo Switch with my kids. So, Mario games. Um... But uh, video games outside of uh, like like I played Cyberpunk, loved loved that. So, uh, but basically, I mean, Cyberpunk is just another, you know, first person shooter RPG. So that's definitely like one of my favorite genres of game. But I also like uh, strategy games and whatnot. Um, uh, what's the? Um, I can't think of the name of it. I got really obsessed with it for like three months and then moved on. Uh, Frostpunk. Uh, I think I think that's what it is. The one where you build the cities in the little circle. Um, but like builder games, I love. Uh, uh, I got briefly into Stellaris and realized that that game was going to destroy me because um, it's so deep. It was taking me down some some rabbit holes of like, oh my god, we could put all this into Fallout Four, and then and it's like, this is this is bad. This is bad. I've got enough feature creep. I don't need another game inspiring me to do more. As it won't the update mess with us is too. I bet it won't. I mean, but we won't know until we find out. But I'm not worried about it because, uh, like, even when, like, but uh, Bethesda has actually shown they're willing to work with mod authors um, on stuff. So, like, when they were getting ready to launch uh, the new one, what's it, Legendary Edition? Like, they reached out to the, as far as I know, um, this is what I heard, that they reached out to the FRC team and gave them advanced copies so they could get FRC ready to go on launch day. I'll so, like, I, you know, whatever whatever happens, happens, and, and like, we'll fix it. It's I mean, you can, you've seen that most 
of the Skyrim mods that broke, they can be fixed. A lot of it was just time. it was just bad timing because the mod authors moved on, so they haven't been around to update. But you know, I don't think that there's the mod authors who are still supporting their mods. I don't think very many of them are like, oh no, we can't come to special edition. I think it was just a matter of like the big killer was just that they had to do some stuff, and not all the mod authors were still around to do it. Uh, there's what I want. I don't need. I don't know why I grabbed empty bottles, but so yeah, I'm not worried about it. It'll, we'll deal with it when it comes. Unfortunately, it's going to come within the window of time when I still plan on being actively working on SS2. Like, I'm, I'm not going to be working on this forever, but, um, you know, 2023, I absolutely will be. If not, I mean, we'll be done. Chapter 3 will definitely be out. Uh, well, I, I certainly hope it'll be out by the time uh, this new update comes out. But um, even after that, like, I'm, it's going to, you know, you guys have seen I've been working, putting on bug fixes for a year since chapter two came out and I don't anticipate chapter three will be any different. Like there's just so much content that it's going to take a long time to get all the bugs worked out. And so if I'm going to be actively working on it anyway, then eh, what's the difference if I got to make some tweaks to make it work for a better version of the game. I, I really, my, my hope for the new version is, Oh, well, we're about to hit nine o'clock. Uh, my hope for the new version is that we're going to see a, uh, an option for Xbox players to like nuke their, mods and get a bigger mod space or mod storage like that would be amazing because that would let them actually experience all of our mod has to offer because we have to cut so much for them to let it fit which is such a bummer guys if you're just joining now you know in just a minute here i will um i'll take a pause from what i'm doing and, and talk about what i mean by easy mode and what, what i plan on doing with this playthrough right now i'm just kind of trying to rush through the early game but still grab plenty of loot and then uh, be good to go here. Okay, let's get this going. Oh, I think those glasses get perception, don't they? All right, nine o'clock. Welcome, guys. So this is my second playthrough of Sim Settlements 2 on camera here. And with the first one, I basically played with 90% of the default options that you get when you were just playing without messing with any settings. So if you just boot up, SS2 right now, and you're playing in, say, normal difficulty or anything less than survival and above easy, you're going to get a certain set of options for SS2. And those are the options that I thought most folks would enjoy if they are attracted by something called Sim Settlements. Like, if you like a game with the word Sim in the title, probably are going to like the default options. But SS2 has two other, has a lot of more options that let you kind of granularly control things. But we created three profiles in total. One we call uh, the city builder, which is that the average results that I expect most folks to get. Then there's hardcore, which is enabled by default if you're playing on survival difficulty. And then there's automated, which is what is enabled if you're on easy or very easy. And this is the mode that I think even some people who don't necessarily play on easy or very easy might still enjoy if they're not into management sims, but they like kind of the, like fundamentally what SS2 is doing, which is bringing in some story to make settlement building have a have some purpose and also you know making it so it's really quick to build pretty beautiful settlements like you can um you can quickly spin up a settlement that looks pretty darn good with just city plans or with plopping down a bunch of plots and then letting them upgrade and so i wanted to showcase that particular play style what i call the automated play style so i'm going to play this character until I feel like I've shown off enough of what I mean of like how the game can feel with the uh, SS2 in automated mode. I should have called it automated mode, but that uh, isn't as easy to make a thumbnail for. Easy mode, I think is basically effectively kind of the same thing. So it's gonna take away a lot of the need to manage things or micromanage things or you know worry about stats. You kind of just went in automated mode. You just kind of build what you want um, and, uh, and it makes everything go faster. You don't have to worry as much about resource collection because there's less resources to worry about. Uh, I'll show you all those things. That's what we're going to go over at the at the start here. We're going to talk about some of the settings, and I'll show you guys in the holotape some of the settings that get set automatically by automated mode. And then we'll talk about some of the other settings that we can change to make it even easier. So there's a lot of stuff we can do. Um, and th that's the goal of this playthrough. So I think it's going to last. I'm, I'm planning on uh, playing at least till the end of 2022 with this playthrough. And then if I feel like I've covered enough, then we'll move on to a hardcore playthrough, which will be the opposite end of the spectrum with all of the nasty, hardcore micromanagement things turned on. 
Um, that's what we'll do in 2023 as soon as I feel, again, like I feel like this playthrough is done. But this one I think is important because before we go into hardcore, I don't want people to think that there are only, you know, difficult and more difficult options available for SS2. I want people to understand that there are, there is a way to play this mod where you're basically just worrying about the story. Because I know, because a lot of people now, because we put so much effort into our story, are just like, I want the SS2 story, but I don't really want to, you know, spend hours managing my empire of settlements. And that's fair. So... Uh, I want to show you guys how to do that. So that's the goal of this playthrough. Uh, I've decided on a VATS build for this, as you guys saw with my last playthrough. Any of you who played, watched through it, I am not great at combat. So uh, I feel a VATS build will make it so that uh, uh, I don't have to, I don't have to worry about dying much. And uh, we will, uh, and then I'm doing a, uh, what do you call it? Um, I already forgot the name of the perk, the uh, the the dummy perk, idiot savant. Uh, I'm gonna do that as well to power level. So, because once I get to pass, once you get to like level 30, it's even even in my other playthrough, you can see that I can just kind of. Uh, it doesn't matter if I'm bad at the game because it's, you're so powerful at that level. So if I can power level up, lean on bats in the early game, we don't have to worry about dying as much. So we're gonna go in here and we're gonna go. I'm gonna right away. Um, I'm gonna get Jake to show up. Because I do want to get a, a, a bunch of settlers. And he hands you the hollow tape, which is also want to show you guys. And I'll show you guys another spot you can grab the hollow tape if you don't want to deal with Jake. But if you guys are if you guys are new, if this is the first time you watch one of my playthroughs, uh, a couple things about how I play. I am I am a notorious rambler. I like to just let my mind run when I'm doing these things, probably because I have the mic and no one can stop me. Um, and so I'll get distracted and go down tangents, especially if I'm engaging with chat too much. So I tend to just focus on the game for about an hour and a half, um, unless there's like load screens or boring, or, or boring, um, vanilla dialogue we've already heard before. And then I'll go to chat and look for questions and talk about it. But then at, at around 10 30 or 11, I kind of flip, flip the script and I'll go into just chat mode, just answer you guys questions, show you guys stuff you want to see, stuff like that. So if, um, if you want to get my attention no matter when in the stream, just put an at King Gath with your message because uh, the way I have the chat set up is those stand out really good to me. Um, and then any of you who are interested in uh, donating to the mod, super chat money all goes to help fund the development and I will catch those questions for sure. Hopefully right away. I know last week I missed one until too late and I felt felt freaking awful about that because usually I'm really on the ball with those. But I think I was in the middle of a, of a monologue for 20 minutes and missed it. So but all right let's get into it so uh if you're if you're first starting out in the mod all of the settings are going to match your difficulty since i didn't change my difficulty in the menu when we started my settings right now are going to be based on the the uh city planner difficulty now i could go into the mod config here because i'm using mcm and just tinker with it but because we're not even building with any plots yet it doesn't really matter um so we're going to grab this yes. which will give us enough resources to build a uh recruitment beacon I think everything but gives us everything but steel, but we should have plenty of steel just by default. And we'll need, I think we need a little bit of rubber to build a generator too. Uh, and actually, I'm not going to do it here. That's the other thing I decided. We're going to not build out a sanctuary again. I've done too many playthroughs where I build at sanctuary. So let's go to another settlement. Um, we're going to throw up a quick poll. I've got two in mind. We'll let you guys decide which one I do. Bring on the monologue. Jason Lokrantz, thank you for the, thank you for the super chat. Really appreciate it. Um, don't worry, there will be plenty of monologues before the night is over. Um, let's see here. Where is my, where's the poll thing? Start a poll. Okay, so we're going to go, which settlement do we start with? We'll just do which settlement, you guys know what I mean. We're going to go with, uh, our choices are going to be Starlight and Sunshine. You guys tell me which one we should do. So, ask a community. Which one are we going to run our quests out of so like basically the first settlement you beat a be build a beacon in that is where jake will show up and he gets set to kind of choose that as the main settlement for all the events that happen so like whenever there there's a quest that involves a settlement he'll send you over there the objectives will go over there um so that's what we need to pick and start with and uh, that'll be where i kind of do my primary build give me some loot Oh, I guess I can, let's see, put the glasses of perception, right? Yes. Okay, I have all this good stuff. Oh, just a pipe rifle. Remove all the stuff you put in the Museum of Freedom from SS1. 
Uh, yeah, we removed all that. We just never, we just didn't get that stuff out. Idiot Savant, you need int five. You might want to show you some WSFW layouts as well. Um, I might show, I, I'm, I don't know if I'll show out layouts or not because basically city plans are just like layouts on steroids. Um, in fact, they even are based on the code. The uh, layout code is used as the framework for, for uh, city plans. So like when you place your first city, when you place your level zero city plan, it effectively just builds a layout in the settlement. So I don't know that I need to show those off much. Starlight went in by a large margin. Uh, I'm a big fan of that one. I like I like it. And it will make it so I don't have to play with the interior plots because you guys know how I feel about those. So I'm, I'm happy with this poll so far, but I'll let it run for a few more minutes while we're doing all this stuff. And yeah, let's go. With me, pal? Let's go, doggo. Okay, then. Let's stick together. But yeah, originally when we were designing... Yeah, give me that. Drop it. What did you do with it? Did you eat it? Just stole my stim pack. Um, anyway, when we originally designed... I guess I could just take this over. Because we're not going to build a thing there. Um, when we originally were designing SS2, we were writing all of the story and everything based around what was already in SS1. So, like, the plan was originally to, you know, go get the holotape out of there. We were, you know, manipulating our story around that. And then over time, then we got closer to having like um, the outline and everything figured out and we were working through the intros and stuff. Like originally in, when you when you first met Jake, he was actually over here working on something and you come up to Red Rocket and there was an explosion. And then like, uh, you go and help Jake up and then the mole rats attack him and then you fight off the mole rats. Like it was a totally different intro. Um, and then later on, we moved it to, I'll show you guys where we moved it to. We actually had all this working too at some point. I probably have an old alpha build that I could play to show you guys this old stuff, but it wouldn't have any voices. It would have been all robo voiced. Um, but uh, we moved it from Red Rocket because we were worried about the pre-build system from Conqueror or something similar where people, you know, something where the player had messed with the, the location before Jake showed up. Then we had him for a while. For a while, we had him set up right down here. Um, we had like a car he was working on, and then that explodes, and he gets knocked out by this bus stop, and then you help him. Um, and then eventually, I think Cynical Bounce and uh, had the idea of like, we should have him show up at a settlement. This is a settlement mod, uh, which ended up being perfect. And then it lets, you know, I added in the, the player, some player agency there. They get to kind of control things a little bit. Um, by choosing where Jake ends up starting, we anticipated most folks would do Star or uh, Sanctuary, but it's not required. Uh, all that's required is a and any settlement that's considered in the Commonwealth. I actually think I need to change it to enforce it to an exterior settlement in the Commonwealth because if you try and do uh, if you try and start our quest line in something like Vault eighty eight or Mechler, it causes some weird issues. Like you'll have a lot of pathing issues with the characters trying to get to their destination, so things can break down. Um, so I don't recommend doing it on an interior settlement as your first settlement. And we do have a tool. I'll show you guys in the holotape when we get it. Uh, if you, if you chose poorly, like if you, you know, you used Vault 88 and Jake appears there, there's a setting in the, in the holotape you, where you can force override which settlement Jake uses as the objective point for all the quests. So like the quest where old Paul shows up and everything. So we have a solution for that if, uh, if you make, if you made a mistake in your playthrough. All right. I think I'm heading in the general direction of Starlight. All right. It's over by Drumlin. Yeah, Starlight winning handily, uh, 72%. Let's end that poll. There it is. I see the little screen icon. All right. <laughs> Question, do I can swear there's a weird shadow on the desk where the hollow tape was sitting and the note. That's funny. I ain't giving you poison shilling. All right, let's test out our uh, our vats. You know what that junk has done to my boy. Ooh, it's working pretty good. What an opening! Oh, she's still stuck in stuck staring at uh, Trudy. Get her dog meat. Wow, I've never heard uh, this character start screaming like that. It's a little uncomfortable. I'm, I'm, this is weird being uh, 
having nothing right now. Oops. Can we do... No, we can't wear it with Drifter. So Drifter's... No, I guess this is just better than the Drifter, other than energy damage or energy resistance. Okay. Uh, I guess Vault 111 jumpsuit it is. Where'd he go? There he is. That's some other stuff, too. I like wearing the Vault suit because you get all the commentary from the NPCs about, about it. Hey, Trudy, you want to give me some reward here? I can't wait to see the crows feeding on that scumbag. Here, this is for you. Now, if you ever need to trade, my shop's open. All right, level two. Let's get our idiot Savannah on. You got things covered from here? Yeah. It's going to take my son a while to get off the chems, but we'll make it. We always do. Now, let's get back to business. You need anything for the road? Uh, uh nope. Okay, uh, let's see. What does he have hey. to say? Never take a hit at Jed again, I swear. That's a mistake, buddy. Jed is life. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, we want to level up. Let's go get ourselves some idiot savant. There it is. And then what comes after that? How far? I'm trying to figure out how far I want to go. I guess I want. You kind of need to get pretty far into luck, right? I got a. I got a. Spam some points in the luck at some point. All right, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. All right, let's go grab Starlight. Uh, Rick Adsley. Oh, King Gath, you know when the gunners attack on settlement, how is that chosen? Because for me, Paul was in Jamaica playing with Stodge, but the gunners chose to attack Warwick Homestead. Um, so they, and there's actually, if you're talking about the sequence where they continue to attack um, after the quest hostile takeover, they intentionally never choose Old Paul's settlement because of it would, it would make a quest moment really awkward if they did. So they intentionally never do. I guess I should be using bats. This is what I expect into. Anybody else? There we go. Easy mode everything. All right, let's go. Oh, do I got to pick a lock? I don't know if I have any uh, bobby pins. All right, let's try not to get blown up by mines. All right, dog, dog meets our bomb sniffing dog today. Cool. Is there another one? Or was that it? It was just the bottle cap mine and then the second mine. Oh, look at Cherry. Nothing? Okay. Let's see if I got any bobby pins. I got one. Okay, that's all we need. Well, hopefully that's all we need. <laughs> Gotta be very careful here. Or maybe we'll get lucky. Yeah. Nope, nope, nope. Uh, let's see about here. Gotcha. That's it. There we go. Ta-da! Okay, let's build our build our uh, little thing here. We'll build it up on this thing because uh, this is going to be a place I don't do a city plan at. So we'll get this thing out of the way. Let's see, we need gear, steel, and rubber. Do we have more steel for that okay so let's start with getting some steel there we go we can probably build a windmill if we can't build the generator okay get you up here check out our power nope what do we need for this we need aluminum steel copper gear okay so i guess i should have grabbed everything out of the workbench from sanctuary so i guess we're gonna run back over there oh what's going on here oh do we get gene immediately hey there you look like all right best friend too, right? You've got a deal. I'll spend all my caps yeah. on another dog. You sure? I'm, I just don't want to sell it. Right. I'll take good care of her. I've don't got worry. one charisma though. Who's there? Let's do this. Oh, oh. Ah, look at all the blood. Yeah, that bloat fire. Real bloody. Hey there. Hey there. Nice dog. Sure. 
You've got a deal. Oh, yeah. I just don't right, want to. Let's see if I I'll take good care of her. Don't worry. You know what? Ah. Uh, <laughs> Penal penalized for taking the one charisma build. All right, let's do let's get back over to sanctuary, grab all the stuff out of the out of there. I can grab it out of red rocket too on my way. Oh yeah, there's mine in the back of the stairs, you guys are right. All right, let's uh, take all. All right, I'm not over encumbered, cool. And then we'll go to Red Rock and do the same, make sure we got enough. No, Gene's not part of the mod. Gene's actually a random encounter in the base game. All right, grab all. Oh, nope, I wanted to take all, not store all. All right, we're still not over encumbered. We're winning. Off to Starlight again. Oof. Actually, while I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna go. I think you can scrap all these barrels, right? And that gets rid of the radiation in the center. Oh, but still rats from the storm. Okay. Okay. Alright, let's go sleep off the storm. I, can, uh, I guess I, I shouldn't really be afraid of console commands since we're playing in cheaty mode, but... We'll not, we'll not go to them yet. Oh, a couple of 10 millimeter rounds. Alright. Yep, take that. Cannot sleep while taking radiation damage. Since when? Oh, do you have to be in like a... Is there like covered areas where it doesn't count? Or am I thinking of something different? Oh, there it goes. I just need to wait for the ticking to stop. All right, let's go to 8 a.m. No one will complain if I scrap all. I actually still enjoy scrapping and uh, running wires. There's something like there's something enjoyable about those two little little things, like moment to moment gameplay wise. Those are just I find those enjoyable to do. And I like how, I like the the scrappy look of my settlements when I when I have to pick up things one at a time. All right, I guess we have enough for this, and not enough for the windmill. Interesting. All right, we'll take it. Okay, we should have Jake mosey on over in a second here. This is nice building in Starlight as the first settlement. So many, so many builds I've done in in Sanctuary. No idea what I'm and like the one of the things I love about Sanctuary. I feel like I can just chase the road. I don't really have to think about a build. I guess here I can kind of do the same thing with I can build around a little pit in the middle if I want as a as a starting point. But I think that's what my and that's what I always do. I need to I need to avoid my natural inclination so we can try and get a build that looks a little bit different. Maybe I'll build around this structure instead to, this time, or the screen. One of the two. I'm thinking this thing though. Jake, where are you, buddy? I actually don't know where the, so he should, there's a, in every settlement, or or just sometimes just outside of every settlement, there's a marker, there it is, there he is over there, um, that's flagged as like the spawn point where the settlers will, will appear and come wandering over. I actually appreciate that in some settlements it's outside the settlement, I wish they were all like that. You know, there's a bunch, there's mods out there that move the attack markers, I'd like to see some that also move the spawn marker, so that it's less likely that you see the NPC. Like in um, in Sanctuary, there are actually three other markers where people can that are linked to the workbench where they could get where they could appear from. One of them is like up in the hills by by the vault entrance, which I think would be a great spawn point because it's very unlikely you'll see the NPCs just appear out of midair. Hey, hello there. If I'm not mistaken, you're the gal I've been looking for. You uh, hear my broadcast? <laughs> you're sharp. Yeah, I heard your broadcast. Sounded as if you were starting some kind of settlement. Is that about the right of it? I'm should it you know what Cobus will appreciate? You know what we're gonna do for this short playthrough? We're gonna be a jerk to Jake. When we're gonna anytime we get get an option to say something mean, we're gonna do it. Yeah, yeah. Just tell me what you want. Alright, I'll cut to the chase. 
Here, catch. It's called an ASAM sensor. If you're gonna be building settlements, these things are what you'll want to use. Looks like junk to me. <laughs> I think a demonstration is in order. Place that ASAM down on the ground somewhere. Go ahead. Any old spot will do. My favorite, my favorite story from uh, when we were testing this is when <laughs> one of our testers—I don't remember who it was—kept uh, doing this. This was, this was their. They were mad at me because they couldn't get the thing. They couldn't get this to work. They kept doing this. Uh, I'm dropping it on the ground, <laughs> which is awesome. Um, but like, ever, like eventually they figured it out and then said they felt really stupid. But I just love that that was there. I like that they took him literally. All right, let's go over. Oh, I'm playing. This is something I'm playing with that I haven't in my last post is uh, Wasteland Reconstruction Kit. I don't know if we need it for anything, but um, I figure I should have it installed just in case. Uh, in case you guys want me to show something, or you guys know of an item that you think would work well for something, or uh, you know, if you guys have questions about something. So we've got that access to that. All right, let's build a residential plot right here. Ooh, I don't like that. Let's sink it, sink it into the ground a little bit. Whoops. Or not, and it'll float. You've made the smart move of choosing Rocket Brand ASAP sensors for your city planning needs. Unlike other less reliable multi purpose sensors, Rocket Brand ASAP sensors. We still regularly people post on the forum stuck on the quest line because they did just drop on the ground. That's hilarious. Oh. Rocket Brand ASAP sensors, America's number one sensor solution. Okay, we'll, fi we'll fix the floating in a little bit. I'll have to Actually build a done. foundation under it. Don't mind the ASAM. It's just scanning the area for materials. I cannot wait to go back and fix up the other demonstrations to work as good as this first one. Like, this first one works so darn good every time I watch people play it that I'm like, I'm like patting myself on the back and then I watch somebody play the next part of the quest and I, I cringe because I'm like, it's so slow. Like the responsiveness. I don't know what I did different between quest one and quest two, but it's dramatically different. And I don't know how to build one myself. I guess I'll just have to rely on whoever runs this place to build a home for me. <laughs> do it yourself. I got a better idea. Do it yourself. Well, I'm more than willing, but like most wastelanders, I have no idea how. But wait, what is this? Why, it's an ASAM! Just the thing I need! <laughs> I get it, okay? Let's be done with this already. Okay, okay. I can see you're not enjoying the performance. I'll quit with the bad acting. But please, keep listening. You see, what an ASAM does is allow pretty much anyone to build themselves. <laughs> yeah, Quester. I think, you know, Kovas was asking me to show off some of the, the lines line. because I, most people don't aren't Let me show a jerk to, me. to uh, Jake. And the voice actor recorded a lot of different lines. So uh, now we'll get to hear some of them that we don't. most folks don't hear. I still haven't decided how much of the, how to, much of the story we're going to play. I'm just going to play it by ear. <laughs> Watch this magic as I build a floating a floating plot. All right, let's take care of this while he's doing that. Let's get some wood. There we go. And slide this slide this in right under him here. Come on. Oh, I probably got to hit. Uh, what's the key for a place everywhere? Is it? Whoa! What did I just do? The directions of the A sand provides are so easy. Oh, I dropped my controller. That's what I did. All right, let's see. Is it F two? There it is. There you go, Jake. Something on your feet. Skywise, the Wasteland Reconstruction Kit has the Sanctuary Bushes. Very cool for fortifying border, borders. Yeah, we put in a lot of a lot of stuff in there. Like regard, like for me, like that's not my my flavor because it's too um, too clean looking. But you know, we put a mix in of stuff like that because I know that there's people who love to build very modern and clean like that stuff. So rare. If we could add a little bit in, it was nice. It's such a bummer that the Institute Build Kit is fake like it doesn't have complete structures it's all one-sided things because it would have been real nice to have a uh, institute build kit for settlements for people who want to do something super sci-fi and nice looking and there you have it 
A fully built home. Ready for habitation by some lucky wastelander. And you barely had to lift a finger. Not too shabby, huh? So now that you've seen what they can do, what do you think? Are I Sam sensors something you might be interested in? Hmm. What's the catch? Ah, oh, saw that coming, did you? You're right. There is a catch. Unfortunately, right now I only have the one sensor on me. However, I, I think we have some uh, Keldane, I think we have some brick options in the kit now that were added to Wasteland Reconstruction Kit. I'm pretty sure that's something Choo Choo added. But first, I'm gonna have he's to he's uh, uh, sort of inherited managing the mod because <laughs> we we've had uh, he'll be the third person who's on it. It's it's a tough job, so like I understand why um, folks uh, burn out on it, but hopefully Choo Choo. Uh, has uh has some more in them to add more content to it in the future. Added a bunch of cool stuff in the last patch we did. All right, get to Just it. Just tell me what to do. All right, here it is. I got me a workshop in a town called Concord. Nice enough place, fairly quiet. Well, at least it was. But just recently, I returned from a trade run to find the entire town overrun by raiders. And now I can't get near my workshop. A small group I could deal with, but there's too many for me to take on alone. So I'm going to need someone to help take them out. So there it is. That's the job. You help me get rid of these raiders, I'll give you more ASAMs. And show you how to build even more stuff with them. Hmm. Don't worry. I'll help you. Didn't have a jerk raiders. option there. You will? Oh, that's great. Okay then. Let's head to Concord and show those raiders who's boss. Lead on. Okay. You ready? There we go. Okay. Let's go murder some raiders. And then we can actually get into showing some of the easy options. Oh, where am I going? I need to go not that way. I need to go that way. Oh, do we got a new settler already? Oh, what's going on here? Uh oh, getting a long save. Those are never good. It's very strange to get one this early. I want—I actually don't think it's long, so I don't think this might be a crash. But we got buff out, so if it is... Oh, there it goes. That was weird to get a long save that early in a save file. Yeah. Alright, off we go. I'm just thankful that the, uh, the days of the five-minute long save seem to be behind us. Because those were those were like I, I I mean you guys saw I put out the bounty because to me that was existential threat to the to people even wanting to ever play the mod again because that was they would get real obnoxious. What do we got here? Oh oh oh. Why can't it? There it goes. Like, why can't I get some level up screen? All right, what do we need next? If we're gonna go, let's see, better criticals. Bloody mess is always just fun. All right, I guess I need to look at. Let's see here. I don't, I guess I don't care particularly about their weaknesses. I don't ever pay attention to that. I just use the gun I'm going to use. Um, I'm thinking... Alright, I'm just going to grab Bloody Mess because I enjoy it. That's just a... Especially with Vats. <laughs> That's just like one of my favorite parts about Fallout. It always has been. Call me a sicko. I don't know why. I just really enjoy the over-the-top absurd violence. Still, still makes the child. I remember when I first saw, like, when that was happening in the game, like, I think that was one of the things I fell in love with with Fallout as a kid. And was just like, oh my god, I've never seen anything like that in a game before. I don't know why I keep collecting all these ten millimeter pistols, but oh, I heard, I heard a bear. Where's the Yagwai? Oh, there he is. Oh, he's he's got a skull. This is not good. 
Um, I guess I got some frag, frag grenades. Oh, let's see here. Is that an exploding car? Yeah. Take him, Jake. Oh, no, no, I don't want that leg. I want the front leg. Melted him. All right, now stay, stay away from the car. Okay. All right. Let's get to work. I don't think I've ever tested this quest from this angle. Let's see how, if Jake uh, chimes in before we finish killing the raiders. Where'd he go? Did you see that? Alright, where are the rest of you guys at? Hey, yep, there they are. The okay, no, he must be conditioned to to wait till after Preston's done talking. Grab that laser musket and help us, please. I don't know who that was calling down to us, but it sounds like they could use some help in there. We still need to clear out all the raiders. And by the sounds of it, there's still some inside that museum. I'll stay out here and keep guard. You should head inside and help those people. Awesome. Okay. So, uh, all right. Now we've cleared this out. So, any of you guys who want to get to the holotape, and especially on Xbox and on PC, you guys can just add it with MCM. Uh, but we hit a copy right here, which happens to be just out of range of Preston triggering. Because one of the weirdest complaints we got all the time in SS1 was people would get mad because we made them trigger Preston's quest. So, and we made sure to put this here so that way... People who don't want Preston's quest in their log can avoid can avoid it. So we'll go ahead and load this up just so we can get some of the easy mode stuff going. We'll take a little break from our little quest. And so as soon as you launch the holotape for the first time, whether you pick it up off the ground, whether you get it from MCM spawning or Jake hands it to you, however you get it, when you first launch it, you get this little fake install screen. And then you get prompted with this. Um, if you're a new user, um, it will... I'm trying to remember. I think new user, it just leaves... It, I don't think it gives you the wizard. Um, actually, I'm going to try that because I'm curious. So let's go to new, new user. Yeah, profile options have been applied. So basically, it assumes you don't know enough to make a determination. So it's going to leave it to match your settings. Um, so now that you guys know that, if you're even if you and maybe some of you guys watching are thinking about playing them on, you haven't yet. Um, if you want to get the easy mode and you're not playing on easy difficulty, instead say returning user and it'll give you the wizard. Or you can come in here into tools and we can go to options wizard. And we get these three options. And basically what these do is these will set about 15 different options out of the gate that will match kind of this play style. So we're going to go with automated, um, which is going to basically take away most of the management and simplifies a lot of things. So you can see settlers handle their own needs, which means we don't really have to worry about food, water, defense, power. Um, other than you still have to worry about them from the sense of the base game will take away your settlements. Um, unless you turn that option off in workshop framework, which I'll show you guys how to do. Um, so you can basically uh, ignore all those needs and the plots will still upgrade. Um, everything upgrades automatically on its own, like it says, and the difficulty systems are turned off. So there's no like maintenance costs. Um, there's no, I'm trying to think of some of the other systems that are going to get turned off. There's no operating costs. There's uh, no diseases. So like almost everything that would add like extra layers of management difficulty all get turned off. So we're going to turn all of those off. And like obviously that doesn't matter yet because we're not into settlements, but we will be shortly. All right, then we're going to come in here. And this is another little nice tip for people who are new, is if you haven't found this out, there's a whole lot of ASAM sensors in here to get you started um, so that you don't... Because ASAM sensors are very expensive. So if you were to try and craft them all, uh, you would go broke very quickly. You can also buy them from, from uh, many vendors, but we're going to just grab a bunch here. This is like enough that'll get you through your first many hours of play. Uh, there's so many of them here. They used to be when we first launched the mod, they were all statics, and then we realized it's you know we don't need we don't need to make it harder for people to get into the mod, and it's not really that it's not the end of the world if uh, if they're getting to build a bunch of plots for free early, and it makes sense that Jake would have a whole bunch of these laying around. The only the only thing that we questioned was should we make it that they're stealing, but then like what would be the penalty? Because there's really no penalty for stealing in Fallout 4, right? Because like even if the NPCs uh, you know get aggro on you, you just run away. Oh, there's another one. Uh, you run away and come back 24 hours later and they forget. It's really good. They didn't do anything close to like what they have in Skyrim. Um, okay, we're not going to unlock his terminal. All right, well, let's go in. Uh, 
All right, let's gear up here. And where's the musket? Oscar, very quick question. Why did you guys animate the gear hammer of Jake's laser pistol? Um, it was supposed to look like a revolver. Um, like it's basically, we used the animations from the 44, I think. Uh, Nero did it. He, um, we were talking about it being cool if we had like a, a fusion version of the, the revolver. And like we were going to make like a fake little model for it. And he's like, I'll just make it work. And he made it actually function. Because we just wanted him to have something a little more unique so it stood out. Similar to many of the other main characters in the game, they show up with... The you know, first time you meet them, they have a, a weapon you haven't seen before. Like, you know, seeing Preston and he's got this crazy weapon you've never seen before, even though it's not unique. Um, but because we were trying to sell this idea that Jake's coming from another, you know, another region of the country, like, they would have different things, so... And uh, it felt it felt in the, the Southerner vibe to have a, a laser re revolver. So, n not all the guns in Fallout 4 are realistic, and we, we embrace that. Alright, can I hack this? Come on, path away. Alright, let's see here. Shave. Likeness 4, right off the bat. Well, that's nice. There, we there go. it is. That was the one of the easiest... <laughs> easiest ones I've ever gotten. And we'll take you. Thank you. Can't increase, and I still get diseases even using the setting you just did. Interesting. Let me check that, because now I'm curious. Let's go to C Manager Holotape. Options. Um, I, I could use MCM for this as well, but we're just going in here because we've been talking about the hollow tape. Let's go to difficulty. Oh, I think disease at its own section. Disease, settler diseases, off. Okay, cool. All right, well, we'll see if we get a disease in this save, and then I'll know that it's a bug I gotta fix. Oh, terrible shot. And I've got vats, and I just wasted the opportunity. I'm not used to playing with vats. I literally have never done a playthrough with it. As my like primary focus. Give me your loot. You know, I think that it would be an awesome mod for someone to rig up to make it so that if you shoot this thing without, you know triggering these guys that it would guarantee kill them both because I think that's what everyone expects when you hit this and like 90% of the time it just flies off and it looks cool but they don't die it feels like one of those things they probably had working in an early draft and then somebody made like a little tweak to the physics system or something and it broke that and no one ever bothered to go back and fix it that's, the, that's what it gives me the vibes of come on man they ain't going nowhere we got other shit to deal with you hear that I gotta go take a little walk I'll be back, and you'll be dead. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Don't you die on me! And another level up. So this is the spot, for those of you who never played SS1, or many of those who did, um, this is where the Sim Sediments 1 stuff was. There was a little terminal, um, and a bunch of, there were ASAM sensors all over, and a bunch of boxes of them, and there was a hollow tape. And if you read the terminal, it would talk about, it was like messages from uh, a city employee basically saying that the city hall was under renovation and so they were working out of the museum and that the, a bunch of the sensors had been shipped, that they, they were shipped the wrong models of the sensors. And so we put a little like burnt ASAM uh, magazine thing here to like, as a, as a little commemoration of uh, the fact that SS1 stuff used to be there. All right, let's level up again. All right, what are we doing next here? Still haven't gotten a single crit yet. How do you get more of those? What's the thing that makes it so that more of them restore all action points? Filling your crit meter. 
Is there anything that increases the rate at which your thing fills up? Is that just number of action points in VATS? I'm so unfamiliar with VATS. Action points regenerate faster. That might be useful. Uh, we'll do Mysterious Stranger for fun. Why not? All right, here's where we're gonna start Man, fast forward and some some dialogue. I'll let Jake talk, but everybody else. Preston Garb. Everybody, not some settlements. Sorry, guys. Glad to help. Oh, I guess I need to be a jerk oh. to everybody, not Please. just uh, Go on. not just Jake. <laughs> it's a cruel world. God you think I don't know that? Right. Better be a good one. Sturgis. Here's a crashed vertebrate up on the roof. Old school, pre-war. Well. Looks like one of its passengers left behind. Oh, just more luck increases the rate? Good. Okay. We're talking of. I like it. <laughs> uh huh. It's a suicide. Look, new gal. So here's the deal. Uh huh. I'll help if I can. But we sure. Look. I already Actually, have it. I already grabbed the fusion core. We're set. Well, all right. Maybe our luck's finally turning around. Once you jack the core into the power armor. Okay, let's grab ourselves. Careful, yes. This. Something coming. Thanks, Mama Murphy. It's angry. Okay, I just wanted to read what does luck do by default. Affects the recharge rate of critical hits. Interesting, okay. What'd you find, doggo? Did you find a suit of power armor? <laughs> Good boy. I always say I'm going to do that, Mod Hunter, and then... In reality is I never play a playthrough long enough to get any stat to 11, so I don't bother anymore. That says Lance YT. Uh, uh, YT. Hello, King Gath. First time catching you on stream. Just want to let you uh, know. Super thankful with Amazing Mod. Thank you. Um, hopefully this is... Well, this is a good stream to join in, because this is a uh, fresh playthrough. So you haven't missed anything yet. And we're trying something a little different today. We're playing... All... All of the systems disabled from SS2. Effectively. All right, Gristle, you go fight the death death claw for us. <laughs> so interesting little uh, thing I learned about this sequence, like this whole opening area. Um, in the original, and there was something that was going to happen a little more gruesome in the original design of this quest. There is a, I think it's it's on one of these roofs. There is a, um, there is an animation marker called, oops, sorry, called Machete Kill, and uh, I think they originally had it set up when you walk into this area, a raider was going to stab a settler through the chest, or uh, I mean a Minuteman through the chest and murder him. We ended up using that animation in Conqueror. Anybody who's played uh, that and saw the appearance of Pandora, we ended up reusing that animation. But they actually have it set up for like a sequence right when you walk into Conqueror. I think you're supposed to watch a Minuteman get murdered and they must have cut it for some reason. Maybe they thought it was a little too gruesome to show off in their little vertical slice. Oh, still got some more raiders. Nice. <laughs> Jake just wrecking people. Just looking to trade a little. Oops, that's still going on, huh? The stupid trade bug. I can never. I have not been able to figure out why Jake is trade. Why will Jake will always trade with you? Do we get them all? There we go. Woo! <laughs> that was 
I mean, you just took down a death claw. <laughs> Color me impressed. All the sound from our firefight must have lured the blast thing out. And where'd you get that power armor from? You know what? Never mind. What about them folks, the raiders trapped inside the museum? Did you manage to help them? Everything's taken care of. Well, all right. Nice to see a happy ending. You did good. You know that, right? I'm just glad we were able to save their lives. All right. You held up your side of the bargain. The raiders have been dealt with. Now it's my turn to deliver. If you'd just like to follow me, we'll get you your ASAMs. All right. I bet, uh, <laughs> bad news, Jake. I kind of already robbed you of <laughs> 180 ASAM sensors. <laughs> So I think it took your whole stash. I'm trading Jake's gun for the minigun. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to write down... So I actually took... So there's um, a, a frequently reported bug, air quotes, that you can't trade gear with most of our unique settlers. And that actually is a bug. It wasn't intentional. We just didn't know why they wouldn't trade. Um, so I'm betting Welcome I can compare Jake to them well, and figure out what's different the between them. It's probably like a faction or something that I, that I need to put most of our NPCs in and take Jake out of. I gotta put that on my notes to look at. Let me find... Oh, I'm, I just finished a notepad pack. For those of you guys who haven't listened to me talk away in monologue, uh, I'm a, I very much like physical paper for notes. Um, I think it's better for... It's better for streaming and, and uh, Zoom calls, which has been phenomenal for this last couple of years where everyone's working from home um because then i don't they don't have to hear me clicking away on the keyboard um but i just i also find like physically writing things down helps me remember it better than when i type them um all right so we're gonna write down uh compare jake to unique settlers to figure out trading issue Because I would like it so that people don't accidentally steal his gun. Because that really ruins some quest moments later. Because we mentioned that gun like three different times. Um, figure out trading issue. Don't mind me. But yeah, I'm sure this is little, me tight, or writing a little bit with the pens. Probably a lot less loud than me clicking away on the keyboard. Shortwind, thank you for the huge donation. Uh, here's some, some incentive to fix settlement auto building to be more focused on SS2. Chapter 2 and 3. I suck at building. Would love some auto settlements to be set up for SS2. Chapter 2, their content to help HQ without cheating. Um, are you talking different than um, city plans? Are you talking about like the pre-build? Because if that's what you're talking about, yeah, I, I feel you. Yeah, we're definitely bringing that back. Because uh, that, that was such a fun feature of Conqueror that I, I can't wait to bring into SS2. We've actually already got it in the, uh, in the alpha build. This place is a dump. <laughs> Back to being a jerk. It doesn't look like they took anything important. Most of my equipment is still here, including your reward. Here, one whole box of ASAMs to do with as you see fit. You earned them. And then he gives you the hollow tape too. And here's a little extra for helping those folks inside the museum. Good deeds like that deserve to be rewarded. Somebody talked to Oscar. Somebody suggested the idea of they should make that should be a project in HQ, which I thought was a good idea. And I wouldn't be shocked if somebody adds that, where like you can tell the science department to reverse engineer Jake's pistol and give you a copy of it. I thought that was a great way to give players access to it. <laughs> more payment. I'm gonna need more than that. That's not all. If you remember, I also promised to show you more things you could build with ASAM sensors. I'll meet you back at your settlement. Don't keep me waiting long now. Uh, no short one. That's not to incense. That is exactly what we're bringing in chapter three. Um, I think I mentioned uh, earlier in the stream. I don't know if you caught the very beginning when pre nine o'clock. Um, I accidentally loaded up with the chapter three alpha, and uh, oh, that's weird. I didn't play any music when that quest finished. Very weird. I wonder if we forgot to select an option. There's um, some of the way the music is handled from quests in this game is really weird. Uh, but anyway. Um, in the when I started the playthrough, we we ex I had to exit out because I saw there was an item from uh, from chapter three loaded up, and basically, 
there will be an option that we don't want people to play with the first time because it makes Jake's whole storyline make a lot less sense if you do it. But we do want support for the pre-build for people on their subsequent playthroughs to change up the world. And the, basically the pre-build system lets you choose a whole bunch of settlements and you can pre-choose a bunch of city plans and it'll randomly select a bunch of them and, and have settlements build in them. And you can set it up, you can micro control it if you want. You can set it up to be like, I only want like these 10 settlements or I want all 30 settlements. And you can choose, you know, randomize the level or make them all huh? level one and then they'll evolve <laughs> over time. Start? So you'll have a lot of control like that in chapter three. Or just ask directions to Diamond City. Threaten. Oh, I don't want to lose her as a vendor though. Yeah. Just looking for love, sweetheart. <laughs> Girl. Have you come to the wrong place? My loving days have long since passed. But I'll tell you what, beautiful. You made an old girl smile, and that ain't easy. You want to do some trading? I'll uh, give you a discount. Deep Dive Gaming, please have an SS2 soundtrack album. It would be a very short album. We only have, we have one custom song that was made for SS, for some settlements one that we put in SS2 as well. And then we are using a, sure. um, I added a song from uh, an artist who put his music all out on Creative Commons. Um, and now I, now I need to look him up because I can't, I've already forgotten his, I wanna like post this thing because the song is so good. Uh, let me go to the credits. This is why we keep credits because <laughs> I wanna make sure everybody gets, because I'm not gonna remember everybody's, there's so many people who've been involved with this mod. It's impossible to remember everybody's um, contributions and I don't want them to be forgotten from by the world since just because my pea brain can't remember them all. Um, where did I put this under? Let's go to Sim Settlements 2. Scott Buckley. Scott Buckley is a brilliant artist. Uh, I think he's he's out of Australia or New Zealand. Uh, puts out the cinematic, like, movie quality music for free and lets anybody use it. Um, we added a new track a couple patches ago to the city plan, so you have an option to, you have a chance to hear it. Hey, there we go, look at some ACM models. Um, but, uh, what do we, what can we sell here? Let's get some caps going. You can have this minigun. And this and this, we'll keep the laser musket for now. Actually, I, I'm, if if I'm not mistaken, it's a good idea to use heavy weapons like laser muskets and gauze rifles in vats. Is that accurate? Like you want to use slower weapons? They end up being it ends up being a better advantage. Or am I am I incorrect in that thinking? Uh, you can have the drifter outfit and. actually don't know what I'm going to use, but I know I'm not going to be using, I know certain ammo I'm not going to use, so we'll give her those. And then we can buy, I don't need to buy any more, uh, oh, Wes and Bobby pens, sure. Uh, Alright, I need to get some more out of her, because she doesn't have enough caps to pay for this. Well, you guys know me in shotguns, I can't resist, so I'll grab those. There we go. Made some caps. Okay, let's continue. The, uh, the track from uh, Scott that we're using is Age of Wonder. I caught myself like listening to it on loop one day for an hour and I'm like, this is this would music would be so awesome to hear while doing a city plan and tossed it in to test it. It was felt really good and thankfully his music is open to use for whatever. doing bud <laughs> why did you just charge at me just headbutt my stomach hold on let me go ditch my power armor all right nope oh, duct tape sure and we'll take this out i guess it wouldn't it wouldn't be the worst thing if a random settler decided to power armor up but all right where you at buddy hey all right, time to show you what else ASAMs can do. Now, generally speaking, people need a roof over their head, food in their bellies, and a place to be working. We already built a place someone could live. So if you're ready, let's move on to those other two things. Ready. <laughs> no those are my only choices. You want more things to build? Huh. Well, right now, ASAMs can only build homes, farms, and places to work. For most people, that's been enough. But if you're wanting more, maybe we can talk about that later. For now, let me show you what your ASAMs can currently do. 
Okay. okay. Let's go. Show me. All right. Place down a sensor again. But this time, we'll use one configured for food production. Oh, we got three people already. Oh, the one of them is probably Jake. Okay, where's going to be? I guess we'll put our farms around our uh, our water source. That feels right to me. All right, agricultural plot. Now we'll remember to use the foundation plots. Go ahead. Just put it down wherever you like. See what I'm, I'm talking about the the uh, the speed of reaction, like the the one from the first quest. It's almost instant that like the that he catches on and the ASM sensor talks and it's, we actually have. I gotta remember to to put these on my list of short term implementation. Um, so okay. one of the things I think that I'm masks of some of the the Don't time. Worry, like I think that the chapter one might or the, I'm sorry, the quest one might actually be similarly slow, but because we have the ASAM sensor talk at the beginning, it kind of masks, it gives you something to pay attention to, and we don't for the other plot types, but we have it recorded, I just didn't implement it yet, so now, I need I to do that. I can't say I've got much of a green thumb, but thanks to the ASAM, that don't really matter. Yeah, Yogi, we're gonna we're gonna be doing some some rewrites for chapter one um, for a couple of reasons. One is I would like to smooth out the unlock of the plot types a little bit to give people them instead of four all at once, to give folks them over a longer period of time. Um, and then we we've realized that with the pre-build and with city plans being accessible right away, that a lot of time players see the all the different plot types right away. So we can still keep the story going and just have Jake talk about. Um, the uh, the com hub as his like primary okay. driver like the Almost the done. the mention of the different sensor types isn't super relevant and we we even talked about one of the things we could do yes. to still have Complain. that Complain. moment Complain. where you find where you get some new Complain. plot stuff Thanks. at the end of um, now I can't remember the name of the quest I just know it I know the numbers of the quest but the end of quest seven um, is instead of him finding new plot types is it could be new classes and we could like short shortcut unlock some of the classes maybe the player hasn't gotten to yet and that would be a, a suitable reward and there we have it a fine plot of land ready for cultivation this from the guy who wants underwater to cactus Nothing is ever that easy. Well, you're not wrong. People will still have to put the work in. But ASAMs allow you to delegate that work instead of doing everything yourself. All right, we've built a home, a farm. Next thing is a place to work. You know, somewhere folks can perform a little industry. Gather scrap or do a bit of scaving, that kind of thing. Go ahead, put down an ASAM that's programmed for that. Oh, look at that. That's a rarity when you get the NPCs to immediately go animate to stuff. All right, where's our industry going to be? I guess away from the food. Yeah, we'll put it by the workbench. I'm going to go over here. Right in the bushes where all good industry belongs. Uh, all right, let me get my mouse cursor over here. All right, surface snap off. I love place everywhere. Okay, and then you still have junk storage in, this is one of the, um, so no, now we're talking about, all right, now we can start talking about some of the settings that are happening in automated mode. So when we have the settings set to be as easy as possible. So there's still junk storage, but because you only need the one junk type, and actually let me see, let me check my complexity, because I'm seeing four resource types over there and I shouldn't have that. So let me check my complexity and see if that got screwed up. Um, so there's four different, or there's three different levels of resource complexity, and on easy mode or automated mode, it's there's only one resource you have to deal with, it's just called scrap, and so it basically like everything counts the same, so you can just like use a bunch of wood or use a bunch of steel to handle all your construction costs. You can actually even turn the costs off, um, but I think we left that on so that players would still have a need to. Uh, no, actually, you can see the costs are off even on plots by default in automated mode, so we actually don't even need to worry about that. So I can actually, this is one of the things where. Um, when I'm talking about, uh, I think I put it in the, the 
what is it? The forum post I did today about this playthrough, some details about it. I linked it in the description. Um, is that one of the things uh, I'm going to be addressing over the next few months is smoothing out curves of things. So like smoothing out difficulty levels, you know, reassessing some of the default settings that get set on the different profiles. And so like one of the things we could do is make it so that the mess pop-up messages only come up if they're relevant to the to the to the profile you're playing on or to the settings you have. Because for example, junk storage is not particularly important if you have all of the costs turned off. It doesn't actually matter if you have junk, if you need, you know, you don't really need to know about junk storage. So suppressing some of those pop-ups, I think will make the mod feel less intimidating. Um, so we're gonna go in here and I just wanna check that my complexity, okay, it's not set on categories. So that's actually a mistake. So let me put that on my to-do list to fix. And this will probably go into next patch because this is this is something that's been on my mind a lot lately of um, you know watching and interacting with, with a lot of folks during the streams and noticing that you know I get a lot of people saying things like, man, this seems like there's a lot you gotta do. Um, it's been on my, on my radar of we need to make sure that we're not scaring away people who we have all the play we have everything in place for them to enjoy the mod even if they don't like city manager games um so i don't want to scare those folks off with with what i'm presenting but also what the mod's presenting um so it looks like so we're going to switch this to simple mode um and simple mode basically means you have one resource to track so instead of having uh, four you just have one which makes it a lot easier but because i have costs off i actually don't need to worry about any um so but we're going to go ahead and switch that to off. I'm going to put that on my notes while Jake's doing his thing. There we go. So one of the downsides of, um, and maybe it's it, maybe it's something that again the Time for some industrial action. it might be worth tinkering with for the um, for the different settings of once you're playing on simple complexity, a lot of the industrial plot types are no longer relevant. So like things like the uh, building materials class, or the the rare materials class, the conversion class, they're completely irrelevant when you're playing on simple complexity. So it might be worth like suppressing those so those don't even trigger as unlocks, and instead just give the player the uh those building plans right away I'd like just as some more variety like those are the types of things i want to think about for smoothing stuff out like the less pop-ups for somebody who's intimidated by difficulty like the better um one of the things that really shined a light on that was watching people do playthroughs of hq and they're just like oh my god there's so much information um and you know once you turn off certain settings in hq it's like well those pop-ups are irrelevant now they don't need to worry about that anymore so i think i need to tie the pop-ups more closely to uh the settings people are playing with let's trade nope don't want to trade gotta wait for the asim sensor to talk oh he's still doing it and we're done Mod 142, yeah, building plan costs on, plot costs are off. Yeah, so building plan costs is a, a tricky one. So the reason that I put that in there um, is because there are occasionally add-on pack authors who decide to balance their particular plans in a way that's much different than the base system. Like, this happened a lot with production in SS1 because different because we didn't have the class level control. Um, add-on authors could add whatever they want as production for their plots. Like they could make an agricultural plot that produced way more than ours, or I'm sorry, our agricultural building plan. And so putting in these building plan specific settings was basically a way for you guys to say like, if you had a bunch of add-on packs that were making the balance kind of wonky to you where you're where it was too important to pick certain plans, you could basically disable their their specific balance changes to their plans so that their plans were forced to use the class, if that makes sense. Of ASAMs you put down, but do try and keep in mind what folks in your sentiments will be needing. Excuse me, hello. Uh, don't shoot now, I don't mean no harm. I uh, hope you don't mind the intrusion. I couldn't help but notice all the commotion. What are you two youngins up to here? That is, if you don't mind me asking. Fixing up these buildings, are you? James Gilmore, I think the MCM setting for complexity is messed up. When I start a new survival game, it shows category like yours did, but the game is actually in component mode. Oh, interesting. So it might not, it might only be an MCM issue. All right, I'll put that on my notes too. Might be MCM. But I saw that my HUD 
was showing in category. So that's why I don't think it's just MCM. So there's, but yeah, you're, there's something wonky in there with the complexity then if you're seeing it show incorrect for, for that. So I'll put, uh, might be MCM on my notes, but it definitely was showing on my HUD. So I'm gonna put that in there. So I didn't even check the, the um, hollow tape to see if it was correct there. Might be MCM, might be HUD. But anyway, we'll get that smoothed out. Get Buzz lost. Off, old man. <laughs> now, don't be dismissive. <clears throat> Actually, we just finished building these. Is that so? Built them by yourself, did you? Well, you two looking to settle down here, or? This settlement belongs to my friend here, not me. I was just demonstrating some construction techniques using this ASAM sensor. Construction techniques? Using that gadget there? <laughs> Sounds like Brahmin dung to me. <laughs> Are you telling me you made all this using that gizmo? And his, uh, his, what do you call them, uh, overall straps are the devil. We have tried to fix them so many times. Is it so hard to believe? I suppose not, but how'd you build this stuff so fast? Hey, here's a suggestion. Why not offer the old timer residence here? Let him experience the benefits of sensors firsthand. That is, if you'd be interested in staying here. I'll admit, seeing you two build with those doodads did pique my curiosity. Huh. And it might be nice to settle down somewhere for a while. It is getting dangerous out there, especially for a scav past his prime. But uh, what an old man like Beowulf. Really the workshop framework has conflict here. with environmental mods that change the world space and also texture mods. I keep getting messages that it's overwritten. So the so workshop framework has zero world edits. I actually checked this. Um, I think you might have brought it up last stream, or maybe you put it on my patch notes. And I went and checked, and we don't have we have zero like world or cell edits in workshop framework. Um, the what causes the pop-up message from Workshop Framework saying things are overwritten is that one of your mods is including an alternate version of a workshop script. And this is a real easy mistake to make for new mod authors because if you go to package your mod in the creation kit, it tries to include any script that anything your items touch use. So it'll include like base game scripts. It's really obnoxious. And so a mod you're using probably did that by mistake, probably has included one of the workshop scripts. And we actually have, if you go to either the Nexus page, if that's what you're using, or the Bethesda.net page for, for it, you can search up workshop framework. And we have a, an optional file on Nexus or on, on Bethesda.net, it's its own file. It's called workshop framework script override. And if you install that, it's in, a, in an ESL flag DSP. You can put that at the bottom of your load order and it will overwrite the overwrite. So it'll make sure that whatever mod you have that's breaking workshop framework doesn't impact those scripts and it should fix it again. So I would I'd recommend you install that. It's just a shortcut so you don't have to try and figure out the conflict. Uh, it's just use the script override mod to, to bypass the issue. Yeah, Nexus, go on to the workshop framework page on the optional files. You'll see there's a script override you can use. That's your choice. I'm not gonna force you to stay. Okay then, you got yourself a deal. Old Paul is at your service. Now if uh, you'd excuse me a second, I uh, want to check out this here sensor doohickey. How about that? Yeah, just make make sure you put the the uh, workshop framework script override at the bottom of your load order. If you're using Vortex, I know it's a pain to set that up. I actually don't know offhand. Um, you have to set a rule, I think, to do that to make it the last thing. I gotta get back to the hardware store. Got a lot of important work to begin on with. <laughs> Am I gonna just just fail? I'll just do this missile. I was gonna say, should I just try and intentionally fail the uh, the charisma check with my one charisma? We're done. Yep, we're done. I'm going to take my leave, so good luck with the settlement. Hey, where's that ASAM fella going? I wanted to ask him a few questions. Why aren't any of our quests playing music when they complete? I thought that was just like a built-in part of the game. Something's funky. All right, you can now craft an ASAM hollow icon toggler at City Planner's desk. He left town. Oh, did he now? Well, you're probably the one I should be talking to anywho. You're the head honcho around this place, right? Well, I've got a request to make. You see, I noticed that there's a whole bunch of new people around here, so I'm thinking it might be best to put down a few more of these here censored thingamabobs. You know, to make sure everybody's got a home. Deep Dive Gaming, can you go into what happens if you assign a settler to an already constructed plot 
and what triggers a plot to build when it previously didn't have resources available. Um, don't order me around. I don't think I'm going to be able to show that because I have costs off. So um, I'm not really going to be able to demo that right now. Um, that might be something better to tinker with when we play the hardcore playthrough. Um, I know you were asking me on Discord about uh, some of this stuff. Uh, all I can say is there is, when you assign a settler to a plot, it does attempt to, it, it will trigger not only assigning them, but it'll trigger the same thing if you were to walk up to the ACM sensor and hit start construction. It does that too, because it's trying to save players a step. So it's like under the assumption that if you're assigning somebody to a plot, you probably want that plot to build. Um, and that's that's intentional. So like we're trying to make it as, easy, as user-friendly as possible. I don't appreciate people telling me what to do. Don't get me wrong. I'm not telling you what to do. <laughs> Just suggesting. These ASAM things seem very impressive, but we can only make use of them if you place them down for us. Okay, did we get plot sizes? Okay, so this is a reasonable message to get, no matter what difficulty level you're playing on. Here we go. Start if I have a hammer. So we need some agricultural, industrial, and some residential plots. All right, let's get building. Actually, we're going to sleep first so we can make it daytime. Up we go. All right, we need nine hours while to do it. I think that'll make it day again. Yeah, there's there's a few. Um, that's the type of quality of life stuff I like to do to make it because for for people who, you know, especially in like talking about this simple playthrough for folks who are just like I just want, um, you know, some settlements to just make my life as easy as possible, and so I can still enjoy settlements even though I don't want to manually build or, or maybe they just want to use plots as like decorations. Then like we want to short, eliminate as many micromanaging steps as possible. So I try to like infer what they want to do. That's just like my my background is in uh, web development, and so we do a lot of that stuff of um, just user better user experience of trying to intuit what folks are actually trying to do, and so that kind of boils over into this. It's actually one of the things that drives me the most nuts about developing for Fallout Four is how little option we have as far as interface stuff. Um, we don't have like workshop or workshop mode is one of the few where we have a fair amount of tools available, like where we can display information or trigger things but outside of this and the rest of the game we're so limited in the interaction we can do it makes it makes it so that uh i have a lot of ideas for ways i could make th this game run smoother and i can't do them because there's not enough tools to do it uh all right well that's and that's probably why some people end up getting into frc stuff because they're just like they want to do it and they don't want to be limited by the game and if we didn't have i think if we didn't have xbox being able to play with mods, I probably would have gone the FRC route, but I want to support Xbox players because I'm I'm an Xbox player at heart. I love I still am tempt I'm very tempted to get a, a Starfield when it comes out on Xbox, but I probably won't at this point just save the money and like um, I don't want to have to buy the new Xbox. I've finally broken myself free from the chains of the console, the console wars. I'm I'm, I'm done buying the new ones. Like uh, I got a Switch because it's it's got Mario games and can't get those anywhere else. But uh, otherwise, I'm not not really interested in touching any more of them. I am tempted by the PS5 because the new controller stuff they got going on with that seems really, really cool. But I can't buy a PS5, so I'm out on that one. All right, let's build some plots. Um, let's say we decided the agricultural was going to go here. So we'll do one other agricultural. And we're going to put some industrial over here. I, actually sh I guess I should build a I should have built a 3x3. Three three. Oh, come on, I had a snap. There it is. Come on, snap in there, nice. There we go. And we'll build some residential over here. And I'm just going to snap them in real nice to make it easy. Yeah, my HUD is still showing all the resource types, which I find odd. That's another... Little bug. It should only be showing the scrap icon, not the little subcategories. Like I can manually force it, um, but it seems like maybe there's a problem with the with changing the complexity setting. 
so I'm gonna have to look into that too. But it's already on my list to look into that. But I can force it, and I'll show you guys how to do the same um, in MCM. If you don't have MCM, I don't know if you can do this on Xbox to force the HUD. Probably will fix itself on a future load. But on here, we can go to the uh, hotkeys, and we'll go to uh, detail level. So we're gonna go ahead and put that on a letter here. If I can get my cursor, yep, mind it anyway. And then we should be able to cycle. There we go. So that is what you see on the right there, where we have resources uh, and only two things. That's what you should see if you're on simple complexity. But as I mean, this again, I, I can't get over how how helpful it is to have these playthroughs to find and fix bugs. Um, so don't be shocked if everything I'm showing you that I'm talking through is suddenly fixed in the next patch. Uh, all right, I guess. I'm cramming everybody over in here. I don't want see here's here's one of my the the things that another thing I love about Sanctuary is I because of, I'm following the road, I end up building less grid like settlements. I grid like settlements drive me nuts. I don't like them. Um I know it's like it's real natural to build that way, but it like especially with plots, but I think they feel they they don't feel natural enough in the in the aesthetic of Fallout 4. Like in Fallout 4 everything is haphazard and awkward, so I'm going to have to I'm going to have to force it for this force everything to look look a little bit bad <laughs> so that's how i like it all right where else can we make it look bad um i guess we can cram a house kind of like in here like this that'll feel nice and awful and I'll try and do a flat one and we'll sink it in. So as you guys can see, everything just builds, even though we have zero junk. Um, this is part of the automated mode. Like you don't this is this is closer to how SS1 played. We didn't have any resource costs in SS1. It was like as long as you had the ASAM sensor, you could build. Um, you know, if we wanted to make it take it even further for the um, uh, and we only need the one ASM sensor. If we wanted to take it even further for uh, for totally doing everything free. Oh, did we forget to do a uh, for foundation one? Um, we could even put on, you know, I could even toss in workshop plus and turn on free build mode, make it even easier. Let's go to terraformers here. And we are going to, because I'm not going to find enough concrete, I'm just going to TGM for this because I don't, I should have just built a foundation plot, but didn't by accident. There we go. Ooh, I don't want clay though. Get rid of you. Uh, we want. Where's my dirt? There we go. Nice. There we go. Okay, so we got two industrial. We've got two agricultural. What do we got? Ten food already? Holy cow. Alright, I guess we'll build another industrial. It's funny, we don't actually need... I guess we don't really... That's is the other thing. Once you play with free resources, like, industrial becomes way less valuable, too. It, like, changes the way you play, too. And again, that puts it more toward kind of the way that uh, SS1 was. Uh, in SS1, you didn't... Industrial was really unimportant. So unimportant that when we shipped, we only had one design because it wasn't that important. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, I guess we'll keep building them just because I like them. I think they look cool. I have Workshop Plus disabled because there's actually um, there's some fixes I need to do in it that uh, uh, the mod author Niston pointed out to me, and so I don't want to use it in this save until I have those fixes in place, so that way I can test to make sure they work. So that is why I'm not flying right now. All right, to get back to the haphazard look, we're gonna not snap this guy, and we're gonna face it backwards, make it look real awful, just the way I like it. And actually, I see. To me, it doesn't look awful. It looks better. Um, but I know for some of you guys who like, or your settlements to be in neat rows, this is it's probably triggering the way I design my settlements. Haphazardly ugly, which makes it pretty to me. Okay. So this this um, quest, I know we got a lot of. Uh, hey, unlock building materials. There we go. Not that we need this. Another way I could approach the simple complexity 
Mm, no, that's not a good. I was going to say I could make it so that it's producing those resources direct into the workbench, but then that breaks our one of the reasons that we changed to the design pattern we did of doing the um, changing over to the virtual resources where you know the things are only accessible for your settlers is because we were in SS1 we break the balance of the game real hard because we produce so much junk in your workbench. So that was one of the things we uh, wanted to avoid in SS2. I think if anything, we probably went the other direction. We probably made it so that we made the base game a little harder because of the resource sink that we provide. Though, uh, again, easy mode, not, not the case. So if you ever feel like um, if I had a hammer gets stuck, every time you enter an exit workshop mode, it does try and update the objectives again. So if you feel like things are, if it's not responding, you can pop in and out of workshop mode and that'll trigger it to update. But I just realized there's another plot trying to build up. So that's where we're at with that. Need to get back to Diamond City one of these days. Oh, we got a lot of messages here to catch up on. Uh, let's see here. Deep dive. Oh, I think I already responded to that. Nick Carter, I would be nice to be able to repair the sunshine drive-in screen. The sunshine i think do you mean the starlight i think somebody i think there's a mod that does that that adds like a repaired version of it i think we actually let me check this i think we may have added this in in wasteland reconstruction kit let me check i feel like we added in in this recent one i'm never gonna be able to find it maybe somebody who's good at this stuff knows where it is um i'm pretty sure we just added in the the screen from the other drive-in, the one in Far Harbor. I'm pretty sure we just made that a buildable, but I don't know where it is. See, this is this thing right here, this contest winner items, this is something we did briefly during the SS1 City Plan Contest, and it's something that I actually, if we had more people on the team available to handle this stuff, this would have been something I'd love to bring back, was the ability to uh, for winners of the contest to add new items that we would either create or, or get permission from other mod authors to put in. It was such a nice, it was such a fun little thing that we we had to abandon because it was we didn't have enough enough folks capable of doing it who were available. Miscellaneous. If anybody happens to know who's who's good at this screen or this uh, system, who knows where this stuff is? Oh, what's going on here? Why are these invisible? Is this bugged or do these just appear when you build them? Let's see. Weird. Hey Choo Choo, if you happen to be walking, watching, I, I feel like there's something wrong here. Why, why are these, why are these all invisible like this? Something funky going on. Like you can see that they're meant to have more. You can even see like a kind of outline. This is funky. Uh, anyway, there's somewhere in WRK now. There's there should be the the Eden Prairie screen, so you should be able to just like build it over top if you use Place Everywhere. All right, let's exit out and see if we trigger the uh, update to the quest. Wait for soldiers to finish constructing jobs in Starlight Drive-In. Uh, we will refresh one and see if that triggers an update too. I don't want to update? All right, I'm just gonna keep building. <laughs> we'll get it to trigger eventually. Uh, still got plenty of food. I guess more industrial it is. Nope, well now now food went down. Okay. Uh, well, food's in the red again, so our needs went up. So the, some of these people are extra hungry or something else. Something else is going on here. We'll just go ahead and build another one. We're going to need more eventually. Uh, let's build it over here, I guess. Okay, there we go. Last person's on that one. All right, we're already triggering. We already triggered some production. Now again, not that we need the scrap anytime soon. We will need it if we decide to do an HQ, but I don't think we're gonna do HQ in this playthrough. Cause that, I mean, the, well, the exception to that will be if I learn enough 
I guess I can build another uh, plot since we got a sixth person. Uh, if we learn enough, and I forgot to grab the Conquered Five. Totally forgot to go talk to Preston. I uh, will go back and do that. Um, if we learn enough doing this playthrough of like more things I want to tinker with, um, like because one of the things I need to do with HQ is make sure it has a better easy mode. Like it has some easy mode settings, but it's not enough. Um, then maybe I'll use this playthrough as the as the uh, t the platform to test it and show off the changes, so that uh, everybody who's who's been scared of HQ can see what it could be like in uh, a little easier mode. Uh, yeah, we'll build another person over here. Sure. Although I do want to have I do want to do a lot of commercial this playthrough. I really love the way the commercial plots look, particularly level three. So let's cram cram more residents over here. Because it would make sense to have the 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 commercial feels like it's going to want to be near the what feels like the natural entrance of this place. Get you out of here. Deep dive gaming. You made us to a challenge to master, and that's what hooked me. If it had been easy mode, I'd have been bored with it by now. Yeah, and that's why we got we have the the multiple levels in it, and I think. I, I still feel like the doing the city manager as the default is the was the correct play because I think the name you know the name sim hey there there we triggered it so I don't know why why it wasn't counting those I bet it's something I bet it's something like we have the objectives written one way but the behind the scenes code is probably looking at number of people not the objective whoa she just appeared right behind me um, and that's why it made me do a sixth one that's my guess uh, I'll have to take a look at that all right hello Lily. Um, hey, are you the one who put out the radio message? Is this your settlement? It's very nice. We had to leave her home. Everyone was getting sick. So, if you're looking for people and it's no trouble, well, we'd like to live here. Sick people? What was that about people getting sick? Don't worry, none of us are sick. That's why we left. So I had a discussion so with, I, it. was it you deep dive? We, were we discussing this or maybe it was Quester? Maybe, maybe both of you guys. Water. I think both of you guys when we talked no, about we some of the stuff that you said here, when we were having a discussion about us. things we should change to, to better the experience for others is um, I really like the idea of being able to turn Lily down and doing so delaying diseases. So it's kind of like a, you got to choose your poison. Like, do you want to, it reminds me of, um, that if you guys played Frostpunk, I think we were talking about earlier about games I've played besides Fallout 4 and Frostpunk was one of the more recent ones I've played. Like I've played hundreds of games in my life, but if just currently, like since I've started some settlements too, and since Fallout 4 came out, my, the number of games that I play on a yearly basis has dropped significantly because i spend most of my free time making mods now um but anyway the uh in frostpunk you would often get these decisions where you like you could get some benefit but it would come at a cost and or you could throw it away and get some other benefit instead um and this feels like that like that kind of moment where it'd be like all right you could pop you know do a pop-up of explaining what's going to happen and make it or make it more clear in the dialogue um although i don't know if we can get lily's voice actor back or not anymore but anyway i thought it would be a really interesting choice to have to make at this point of like would you like to uh, you know, to risk bringing in these people who might spread illnesses or, uh, and get, you know, three new settlers or turn them away. I think that would make an interesting decision to, to choose from right here. Of course. Go right ahead. Oh, thank you. Don't worry. We're willing to work. Just let us know where you want us. Okay. Now we get some more built. T3K man, are there any plans to make settler special stats increase by doing work or some other method instead of soling from stat increasing recreational plots, or am I missing something? No, the plan is to keep it just to the to the rec plots because the rec, one of the things we did with us is too is we made it so it's a third assignment type, so you don't actually have to only put them on that. So they can still have a job and benefit your settlement. Recreational is it's just pure upside to build those. Other than they they put more stress on your settlement from. But if again, this is why we're playing automated mode because you can see. That it actually doesn't add any stress in this regard for this for my playthrough. I'm gonna be able to go crazy on the rec plots and get super settlers, and it won't cost me anything. So the rec plot plots is definitely the the only method we're gonna we're gonna put in. I mean, somebody else is welcome to add a, another mod that does something. In fact, there was a mod. It, um, I think it was called Legendary Settlers. I don't know if it's still out there. It might have been one of those mods that somebody put out and then abandoned because it was a lot of work um or maybe they found some horrible bug i don't remember why but i remember a mod came out that was all about leveling up your settlers and and working on their special stats i think now i'm gonna build a three by three recreational or i mean uh agricultural i really like the brahmin one 
In fact, knowing that, let's put that a little bit away from the... Uh, I guess we can put it close to the watering hole still. We still probably need a drink. Um, let me see. Although, you kind of need a flat spot to build this monster. <laughs> oh, wow. We can put it right in the middle. Um, it really wants to snap on there. Let's build it... Yeah, it's going to have to go over here. This is kind of the flattest area we've got. Let's do... Nope, stop snapping. About... I don't want to say get too much. I want the top to be poking out. Do that. That feels right. And that should cover a few of those jobs. Now we need some more residentials. We should be able to trigger multi-person pretty soon here. We're going crazy on our residences. We get a nice little busy city built over here. So now I kind of want to go vertical to keep this in this little cluster over here. So let's go to some default building materials. I'm in God mode anyway, so I can kind of go crazy here with building materials. Let's build this thing here. Pretend you don't see that it's cutting through there. Just look away, guys. I'll make it a little more palatable by doing this. No more floating. And then under there you can't see, so that's fine. Alright, let's get a plot up there. And, nope, oh, I need two of this one. There we go. Get you guys a house up here. Did that build? Nope. That's not where I want it. All right, there. There we go. So now this to cover this up. This is one of the so some of our um, Rise of the Commonwealth city plans were were designed by a guy who went by uh, the name Bacon, and uh, I loved his style. Um, I know some people find didn't weren't a fan of his building plan or his plans because they're they're very messy. But I like what he did. He would like layer pieces on top of each other to get a certain look. So he almost treated settlement building like doing paintings. I always liked that style of, and he would do stuff like this where it would just like, he would take little pieces and kind of create, um, like I said, create kind of a painting with them and just kind of like pal it over. It's like, I want this to look like, um, like this is all built in here. And so you'd take different pieces and, and twist them and, and mangle them to get the look he wanted. In my case, I'm just going to cover up my mistakes. <laughs> this is what I'm doing here. You guys don't have to think about it anymore. We'll just cover up this ugliness down here. Oh, I need to turn off snapping. There we go. While we're waiting for these plots to build. I guess we can shake it up with the types of things we're using. There we go. No more problems. Just just, just don't look at it. Can we have a smaller wall I can sneak in there? Yeah, here we go. Cover this up. Cover up our mistakes. Happy accidents. We'll go Bob Ross style here. There we go. All right, we're getting a little little boathouse up in the air. And then if we want, we can build off of this. I love building... Uh, I, haven't, I didn't do this in my last playthrough. Didn't spend much time building. But every time I built, you guys were, seemed to be happy watching it. So I'm not going to be as shy about it this time. Nobody seemed to complain when I was when I'd get sucked into building for a bit. All right, how many more do we need? We need we're going to need at least one more after this. Um... Can I cram another one in over here somewhere? I feel like there's enough room right in here, but probably just because this guy's house is small, that's what's making me feel like there's another one that can go in. How about we'll do like this. Right up next to the scrapyard here. Let's see. There we go. Okay, so I think we're gonna need one more after that, and then we'll be all set. Let me tuck it in right here. I want these to kind of like merge together a little bit. Let's raise that up just a little bit. Nope, higher. There we go. Get the, at least get the wood out of the dirt or out of the rocks. 
Oh, now we're we're over on top of the on top of the agricultural. Let's give it a little more, a little more breathing room. All right, and now this is a, a feature that uh, we added in SS2 that I rarely take advantage of, but I'm going to do right now, which is you can just scrap the power poles. You don't need all these, or you can move them. This was some, one of those things I got so many requests for from SS1 of like a lot of people were they weren't happy that especially for I think for your folks who built on a grid they thought it looked too too neat to have the same power pole everywhere so one of the requests we had was uh, a lot was to have uh, be able to change out the power pole or just get rid of it Argo the rat folks so I have a mod that impacts turrets both makes them cost more power and resources and makes them run wirelessly do you think that would cause conflicts with turrets at HQ a city plan with them um, shouldn't cause any problem at HQ. We create, I'm pretty sure we created our own copies of the turrets to use at HQ just because we needed them to work a little differently. Um, as far as the city plan with them, I, I have no idea if it would cause problems to be honest with you. I don't know what would happen. Uh, I'd say worth a shot. We're trying it out. See what happens. Okay. I gotta wait for them to finish constructing homes. Um, I don't know offhand if it would cause any problems. Like I think it depends on if it's just modifying their resources. I don't think it'll be a problem. I think if it's um, if it's modifying, I'm trying to think of uh, what could cause a problem there. I, I really don't think it could cause a problem just doing that. Um, it should still because the way when the city plans place the items, it still treats them like real workshop items. So it should be fine. All right, let's switch this to a Brahmin farm. Should have done that earlier, because now we gotta wait for that to finish, but that's okay. Alright, I think that's the last one we gotta build. Constructing homes, there they go. Now we just need the jobs. Okay. Hey, unlocked multi-person. Fantastic. So we're gonna need those if we're gonna cram everybody into this little area. Alright, I guess while we're waiting for that to build, I'm gonna kind of prepare for our Conquered Five. I'll build up our little upper area I wanna do. Um, and we're not, this is probably where we're going to stop today and switch over to chat mode. Um, just want to get this part of the quest finished and while we're waiting, we're just going to build a little bit more. So I want to get like a walkway going up. All right. Need snap back on. You going to snap for me? No. Oh, there it goes. All right. And then that needs some support. Surf, surface snap off. Click, 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 click. <laughs> My controller. Love playing with a controller. And I remember I was so against it for the longest time. Like, I came off of playing, uh, when I was younger, played a lot of first person shooters, and I was really into doing it competitively, which you probably don't believe when you see how bad I am at shooting in Fallout 4. Um, and then, uh, and then I took a few, I took a few years off of video games. And when I came back, I decided I would do, do them a little more casually. And I got into a controller and then tried to switch back to mouse and keyboard and I couldn't do it. And I'm just like, man, I just, I just like the, like, it just feels so much more chill to play with a controller. And I don't, I, the, my competitive instinct doesn't kick in. Uh, and then I can actually relax when I'm playing games. But it won't work right. That's no reason to go beating the living daylights out of it. Well, how do I make it do what I want? I wish I could tell you, but I really don't know. Then you don't know that kicking it won't work. <laughs> the, the downside of sinking into the ground. So the way uh, this little sequence is handled is we search for the plot with the lowest height, like which is the lowest one into the ground. Um, and I don't know. I think we did that to make it less likely she would play this scene like up high in the air. So like where, you know, like I've been building vertically. So we picked the lowest one to try and reduce the likelihood of her not being able to path to it. But then, of course, you have this can happen. Excuse me, sir. But it won't work right. Oh, hello again. Oh, thank goodness you're here. Maybe you can talk some sense into the young lady. What's going on here? It's this sensor thing. I want to build a store, you know, somewhere I could sell stuff, but it won't work. A store? I don't think the sensors can build those. Can they? Maybe. Hmm. You know who would know? That ASAM fella. 
Maybe you should go find him. Ask him what else these sensor flibbity gibbets can do. Fine. I'll think about it. That's all we <laughs> ask. In the meantime, I'll get the new arrival settled. And hopefully prevent more property damage. Good luck. Do I, oh, I wonder if I have... I bet I have... Mu I wonder if I have music volume lowered. I'm just like, why is it... This is the third quest in a row. It's not playing anything. Let's see here. Audio. No, I got music on. Why is it not playing... Am I crazy? Isn't it? Doesn't it usually play music when you complete a quest? I wonder what I changed. What did I? What did I break? Okay, so that's like a perfect spot to stop there, um, in uh, in the play part of this episode. So now we're gonna shift gears to just talking. So I'll uh, answer questions for you guys, uh, whatever you guys want to talk about, and uh, if you guys want me to show you anything in here, I can do that. Uh, but as you can see this with the start of this playthrough things go real quick when you turn off things like costs so the automated mode is all about kind of taking ss2 to to make it feel more like ss1 where it was just about rapidly letting you build gigantic things less worrying about thinking about numbers or balance you can just kind of build whatever you want you just design um you get some of the you know you get some of the benefits of ss2 and you get the story content and you get the the more the different styles of building plans and everything um, but you can kind of just build, treat it kind of more like uh, another piece of art to build with, another, another, um, like a dynamic building piece. So, you know, you think about all the different mods you have to add new stuff to build with. This just adds objects that can transform into a bunch of different ones, especially when you install a bunch of add-on packs. And uh, this mode has been in there from the beginning, but I don't know that everybody finds it, that you have this automated option if you don't ever load the holotape. Um, and I think uh, it's it's worth trying if you found if you find yourself like overwhelmed with uh, with options in SS2, try the automated mode. I think uh, I think you'll find it uh, good, and it's probably something worth playing for folks who just are looking for a playthrough that's less SS2 centric, but they still want SS2 for the uh, for the story or for the um, you know for all the building options like city plants and stuff. I think the automated mode is perfect for for that if you're not looking for that centric playthrough. But if you like the um, uh, if you like, if you like what we got already, you know, you don't change anything. I just want to really wanted to show off this mode because I know I get requests often for folks who, um, who, who say they, they don't want to manage all the little options in uh, balancing out their settlements or, you know, who want the mod to be more, who want it just focused on the story instead of the settlements. And this is kind of how you can achieve that. And so I want to, I want to keep diving into this. Um, I want to get into some of the stuff we didn't cover in the last playthrough because obviously when we can build this quickly and I don't have to spend any time managing the settlement, our, um, the, everything's going to play faster. So like we'll be able to do the quests faster. We'll build up our settlements faster. We'll be able to get city plans upgraded faster. We'll be able to trigger the unique settlers faster. Like everything's going to go fast. Uh, I, and this is one of the reasons why I'm like, I'm not totally against the HQ thing because we will also have just like crazy amounts of resources by the time we get to HQ because of how easy it is to build. And I can just spam kind of whatever I want, even without cheating, like without doing, um, you know, force unlocking the classes. Like I can get all this stuff up and running real quick. So let's uh, do our usual thing. Uh, if you're new to the stream, at this point, I usually uh, just kind of interact with you guys since I know most of the stream, I'm just focused on the game. And uh, I will put myself up, you know, I leave the game running so that if you guys want me to show you anything, I can do that. And of course we have, um, we have some nice background stuff to look at. Set game hour to 11, force weather, and we'll do set time scale. To zero point one, and finally TFC. It's it's weird having a, a relatively silent settlement. Usually, when I'm doing this part of the stream, we're in a real busy place with a lot of generators and a lot of noise. Oh, hey, look, our our porn bot is back. Hello, sixty nine Omega. All right, let's scroll back up see if I missed any questions. Uh, let's see here. Beowulf, there's a mod that can make you do it. I'm not sure what you're referring to. Mod 142, but the specials was what I was doing the city plan for. I'm not sure what you mean. <laughs> this is one of the downsides if I fall behind on chat. I don't know what I was talking about. Although I, it also, there's always that downside because uh, there's always a delay. Because I like I've tried playing on. This is one of the things that when I finally get a new system, which I'm not ready to yet. This one seems to be running okay. Uh, when I do get a new system, I'll be able to go back to uh, ultra low latency and actually keep up with you guys. But seems like this the the latency setting I'm running on now seems to strike a good balance of I'm not terribly far behind and I don't get a lot of complaints about uh, frame rate issues, which is good. I don't need you guys puking on me. 
Uh, James Roden, for someone who is much more interested in the quest content than micromanaging things, this is an awesome way to do things. Yeah, I think there's, I think there's, there's room for all for all three of the profiles. I think there's room for more profiles. One of the one of the things on my my dream list before I retire from Fallout 4 modding is to um, add a feature uh, to Workshop Framework. And I know it's weird to put it in here, but um, you'll understand why in a minute. Uh, but I want to add a feature to it to allow you to export mod settings into a file and then upload them to a website and generate a mod that can load that profile. Uh, and for I, I was originally going to do it just for SS2, but then I realized I could do it for other mods to support it as well. And um, the reason I would do it for, work for Workshop Framework is because it's pretty widely adopted already, and that's it's easier to... So I don't want to force another framework mod on folks if I don't have to. Um, it's also possible I'm, I could do it as its own mod. I, I'm not sure how I'm going to do it and if I'm going to do it either. Uh, but the idea would be is you could export all of your settings and, and complex settings too. Like in SS2, I had somebody comment the other day about wanting a feature where they could ban certain building plans from showing up. It's like, oh, we actually already have that. And I don't think a lot of people realize it. But even when you do realize that you have it, setting it up takes a while. And then having to do that again every playthrough sucks. So it would be, I want to have like a complex setting export where you could do stuff like that into it as well. So you can export all that information. Um, and then the reason that I want to export it, because there's, there's already a mod that does this for MCM. That lets you save all your MCM settings and uh, re-import them. But what I wanna do is make it so that, especially for SS2, you can export all your settings, upload them to a website and generate a plugin that's that you would name it as a new profile. So then like when that pop-up comes up and offers players profiles that you could inject new options there uh, and they could have you know your set of settings. So you could release them as a mod and it would work even on Xbox. And so then basically if players chose your profile, it would set up their settings to match yours set up you know if you wanted to have your ban list set up etc and then for new for your own new playthroughs it would rapidly let you get back to where you were so you know if you've got a particular set of settings every time you start a new character you're gonna have to load up ss2 and start them all up and you know sometimes when you just want to play you just don't have the urge you don't have the desire to deal with all that um you know setting all that up can kind of be draining i think i saw some folks you guys talking about that earlier some some folks were talking about they haven't played ss2 yet they want to but they know that they get burned out setting up mod lists um, which I get, like I, I, that's how I get whenever I, uh, start up a new, when I start messing with a new big mod order, load order for Skyrim is I usually like, I get really excited picking out all the mods. And then when I have to start dealing with troubleshooting and then I get burned out uh, and then I end up just abandoning the playthrough. So, you know, anything we can do to reduce the likelihood of that, get, get people in the game faster, I think would be huge. So I really want to do that at some point. Uh, Sin Cyprian is Sanctuary Red Rocket Abernethy a Doom Triangle regarding the building? I mean, it is for some folks. Like, we call it the Triangle of Doom because you, if you're in Red Rocket, technically Sanctuary and Abernethy's cells are loaded at the same time. Excuse me. Uh, and so you end up in a state where you have three settlements loaded into memory at once, which is a lot of strain, especially if you're building a lot in them. So we just recommend you pick, you, it's best to just pick one, but otherwise build two. Um, I could, I'll build city plans on all of them for this playthrough just to show you like that it on some systems you can handle it. It's not a problem. I would say Xbox, no chance in hell. PC depends on your system. I've got a, I would say I have a mid range system. Um, I'm on like, a an older, like a, this system's four or five years old now. I'm on like an i7, uh, I think 32 gigs of Ram and a 2070 video card. So it's definitely not top of the line. Um, but uh, it runs, it has no problem with, with that. I've been able to do it. And then, you know, now that we have conquered building up, we call, we're starting to call it the square of death over there. Is that, again, when you're in Red Rocket, you're loading up all the stuff that gets built and conquered, plus those three settlements is like, it's, uh, it can be pretty risky. I do have on my long-term plans for, for SS2 is to add an option to disable the building and population of conquered. Because I know for some people, it's just too much of a load. So I want to give people the option to control their, how they're, things build up it'll you know it'll, it ruins a little bit of a story moment because characters talk about building but you know game stability is more important than immersion uh james roden is the kicking the generator and the conquered under levels later a reference to this uh, i think it was actually just like a, a a good use of uh of a animation um unfortunately that's one of those things that i think we i don't know if it's still in there does anybody remember is the 
Is the kicking of the generator, does it still do the animation? I think I disabled that, but maybe, I, maybe I'm wrong. Because um, the animation when the player does it gets really wonky. And that was one of those things where it would, like sometimes it would work correctly in testing and other times it, wasn't, it wouldn't. And I'm pretty sure I removed it, but maybe, I, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it was just one of those things where when I watch someone play it, I'm like, oh, I got to remove that and I haven't done it yet. Oscar Fry saw, is Lily meant to use a bar or a real store? Because I put her on a bar because that's all I have. Eh, whatever you want. I mean, she doesn't like, she has, she actually, I think is one of our characters that has a fair amount of, uh, of uh, shopkeeper lines, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so she should, she should feel at home in a couple of different store types. Deep Dive Gaming, you mostly get the dumb, dumb, dumb with the radio sound. Music is only for weighty quest completions, if I recall correctly. Interesting. I feel like I'm not getting any sound, though. Like, I'm just getting... Like, all I'm hearing is the ka of the experience, but I'm not hearing any sound for completing the quest, which is really weird. I don't know what was going on there. Nick Carter, any suggestion on how to get food for settlers in the Boston Airport Settlement? There are, there's actually like a, um, there's a console command you can do to make any settlement a full settlement, but there's mods for that. If you grab, um, I'm sure if you just look up Boston Airport full settlement, you can do it that way. Otherwise, the best way is just going to be to connect it with the caravan services. Um, actually, can you build plots in Boston Airport by default? Does anybody know? I'm actually not sure. Because I know when we use it for the city plan contest, the city plan contest mod dynamically changes it to a normal settlement. And all it is is what's called a keyword. It's just like a tag you put on the, the workbench, and you can like even do it with the console commands. Did you save your end of session save? No, I didn't. Thank you for the reminder, Mod Hunter. Let's do that now. TFC set time scale to 20 and save. Uh, so I guess this is, it will do easy mode, episode one, uh, day one, end of session pretty ballsy of me to not save this whole time too all right let's put time scale back down and back to tfc yeah totally forgot about that that would have been that would have been a bummer if i had to come to you guys next week and be like so i forgot to save uh, i mean i'm sure i had an auto save or something that i could use but jr i exported my settlements before starting a new game i started to have problems where i add a settlement back in as a mod start the game and an existing mod yet esp file is not found are you disabling those mods later or so one of the things that can come up with ss2 add-ons and stuff is so the um while the game allows you to install mods mid playthrough and change your load order mid playthrough the actual game doesn't support it internally. Um, we found that that was one of the things I learned with uh, when we set up the add-on packs the way we did is like it does not like when you reorder your mods in the middle of a save. Um, it it causes weird issues, and that's why that like pop-up comes up. If you even reorganize your mod, so if like say you install an add-on pack or a city plan, and it's sitting at a per certain point in your load order, if you move it down lower, like another mod ends up ahead of it, it changes its ID that the game uses and some settlements looks for its ID, sees it changed and it gets mad. So it's probably fine, but um, yeah, that's just another sign that like this, while this engine lets you do it, it's not really supported. That's I think that's one of the warnings when you go to the mod screen in, in the base game, uh, it tells you like that it's technically not, it's, they don't support much <laughs> with it. It's like use at your own risk. You can do it, but um, it's problematic. So like, um, I have no problem. I generally find the rule is go ahead and add mods mid playthrough as long as they're not big overhaul mods. Like, don't highly recommend adding like something like some settlements or workshop framework to an existing save. It's much better to do that um, on a uh, on a fresh save. But it works. It's just like you might run into some some wonkiness. Um, I I highly discourage disabling any mod. I feel like if you got to a point where you need to disable a mod, you kind you almost have to. You have to either assume that playthrough is dead or that there are going to be bugs and you're going to have to just suck it up and deal with them. Because um, uninstalling mods creates just like effect, basically holes in your save file. So it's like a time bomb. Inevitably, something's going to go wrong. Scrolling on down. James Gilmore, no animation anymore. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's how it's, it's supposed to be that way now. I think we just play the sound. If we could... I'm, it's one of those things where 
if we had unlimited time to add more animations and unlimited uh, budget in that regard, then you know I would have asked uh, somebody to go in and and redo the animation so it worked for the player, but wasn't wasn't it was such a, a quick moment um just didn't seem worth it when we've got some really cool moments coming up in chapter three where I'd rather have uh animators focused on that stuff about 142 i was invested in the city plan contest to get new special content uh stairs copies of no handrail in the way oh i gotcha yeah that's um it's unfortunately one of those things where uh where we had to uh cut that feature because it's it's a lot of work for somebody to do and uh we're, we're all focused on other stuff so we had for a brief period we had somebody who on the team who was doing that and handling it and um they're not available to do that anymore and so i like i don't have time i can't put anything more on my plate um i have so many responsibilities for the team already and um you know it's one of those things where if if somebody comes along who has that skill set and and you know we know that they're committed for a long period like if they would commit to like season four you know we could bring that back but without a dedicated person to do it like i can't commit to it um so we had to cut that feature uh oscar fry i still hear the sound of the kicking but i don't see animation i don't know if it's caused my body mod no that that sounds right the kick we probably are playing the sound now and just not the animation You can, but very few. I assume that's an answer to my talk about how many can you build plots in uh, Boston Airport. I guess I was wondering if you could build them by default, like if it lets you build them. Because you could build a caravan services plot there, and then uh, that would get you food there. Boston Airport is worse than Mechanist Slayer. Mechanist Slayer, I really love the the way it looks when people pull it off. But uh, but yeah, it is uh, it is tough building in that place. It is real tough. Which is why I think it ended up being one of the very last, if not the last, settlement we did in the uh, the vanilla settlement we did for the contest for season three. Because I think it, we had we may have had it on offer at one point. Like we did it, you could choose Mechanist Slayer or another settlement, and like nobody chose Mechanist Slayer. So then eventually, when we looped back around, we get we made it as the only choice because that was the the only way we'd get folks to do it as they didn't have a choice in the matter. And people got really creative. There's some pretty crazy builds for Mechanist Slayer. Argo the Rat, folks. So I've had issues with Sneak, where when he challenges me, the battle never resolves. He just gets back up to fight or just decided he won when he lost and becomes the new leader. Any fix? Um, I mean, I can't replicate that. So my assumption is that there's probably some mod conflicts out there that I would need to identify and see what they're doing wrong um, or what they're changing. I shouldn't say what they're doing wrong. What they're changing that's causing our quest not to work correctly. But uh, it, it used to be busted and I fixed it pretty extensively and now i've played through it a bunch of times without issue um using a minimal slowed order so identifying conflicts like that is always a pain in the butt but if anybody can figure it out like you know, this specific mod you have it installed and it causes the issue then i can address it not crazy probably something i did but did some setting change upon completing old guns every time i go to place a city plan it says no unique settlers found and I have to reset the leader cards. So the leader cards, if you want to, if you're, you're on PC, if you and you have Papyrus debugging enabled, which you can find Papyrus debugging setting um, on the Creation Kit Wiki. Let me uh, search it up real quick. If you Google it, it comes up right away. It's papyrus debugging. Uh, what is it? Fallout 4, I think you search for. Here it is, how to enable debug logging. So if you have this enabled, oh God, more more porn bots, I'll get you out of here. Um, so if you use, if you go here and turn this on, um, come on, send, there we go. Oh my God, with the, another one. I had user on this channel, there we go. Um, so if you if you enable debug logging, there is a log, I, I wanna say that it's, it's under either, it's one, there's a bunch of logs in there you'll find. They end up in your documents folder under my games, Fallout 4, and then it's like logs, scripts, user logs, something like that. If you dig down, you'll find them. Um, and uh, there's a bunch of logs that start with SS2, and one of the logs will dumps out exactly why all your leader cards are ineligible. And uh, it might be something like that, that like a, something happened that caused a bunch of your leaders to be ineligible. So like that's one thing. Um, the the if if inst if you have to reset the leader cards and it works and they all come back 
then I don't know what would be causing that. I actually just fixed some stuff with the leader cards in the la in the last patch. There was um, there was a bug causing it so that the um, the correct ones wouldn't always show. So it might have been that something like after the last patch, everybody needs to reset their leader cache once, and then it shouldn't happen again. But I don't know. Are you continuing to have that happen, or is it just you just happen to notice it? And it felt like that you've been doing it a lot lately. Uh, I'd be interested to know if after the last patch, if you have to do it again, like if you did it once, if that sticks or if you keep having to do it, because I definitely addressed something with leader cards in the latest patch, but it was a fix, not a, um, should not have been a break because I, I tested that pretty extensively that it was, was holding in a new save, but I didn't test in an existing save, but it's all the same code. So it shouldn't even the worst case, like I said, the worst case scenario in an existing save, if, if the code I added caused a weird issue it should be just one a one shot issue it should be like as soon as you rebuild the cache it should be fixed let me show people that so they know what i'm talking about for folks who don't know what i'm talking about with the cache so one of the things we do periodically in ss2 to make things work faster is we do what's called a caching and it's just like you've probably seen it with your web browser where you save information so that it doesn't have to load every time and it just makes things load faster well sometimes when you do a cache in fallout 4 for the reason I talked about earlier about, you know, changing your mod load order where you change form ideas, sometimes that can invalidate a cache. So like, you know, if you add new mods or get rid of mods or restructure your load order, you can sometimes break the caching that SS2 does. So we have this advanced tool in here. So uh, an example of, of cache would be like our building plans. So like when you go over here to a plot and you hit choose building plan, the building plans come up real fast. Anybody who remembers SS1 days, it could take... 20, 30 seconds for this menu to show up. And we cache, now we cache it and it comes up. If you ever load up and this menu is completely blank, that's a good sign that your cache got corrupted, probably from changing your load order. Um, so that the same thing happens with the leader plan. So let's see if, I think I'm in, still in God mode, so I should be able to build a city planner's desk. Uh, we have leader cards, which, although I'm not gonna have any eligible leaders, so that doesn't matter. I can't show you guys anyway. Oh, I guess I got old Paul. So that he should, I think he shows up, but I'm not sure if he, he might not show up until after who can ace some, but we'll try it out anyway. Uh, so we've got our city planners desk. If we go to assign city leader, okay, there's no unique leaders. Um, so once you have some leaders available, which in the in our by default out of SS2, uh, ooh, that pole is like shimmering. What's going on here? So by default in SS2, we have what are called leader cards, which are basically like a piece of information that describes the character traits of an NPC and translates it into benefits for your settlement. So, you know, somebody like, for example, uh, Curie will buff your food production. Um, we call it Lifebringer is her, uh, is her trait name. And uh, there's a couple of different traits for the different NPCs. We support all of the companions from Bethesda, my default, and then a few of our settlers that are part of the story. So um, I think the leaders we have out of the box are Stodge, Teresa, Old Paul, and Hubert. And then any other leaders you want access to got to come from add-on packs. And uh, the leaders use a cache as well to display them. So I don't have any available. But if you ever try and select the leader and get no options and you're certain you have them, so you have companions available that have leader cards or you have some of those characters available that have leader cards, like I think Old Paul's unlocks after the quest who can ace him, which we have not done obviously. But if you find that those caches are empty, go into City Manor Holotape, go to Tools, and then Advanced Tools. And you'll see that we have reset building plan caches, reset leader card caches, and reset settlement flag cache. So the flag is another one that uses the cache. Um, those will regenerate that data so that those empty lists should no longer be empty. Now, if you're having it happen that you're 100% positive you didn't change your load order, and you're having to reset your cache, again, that's that would be very interesting for me to see uh, a save file for because I'm not aware of other ways for that to happen other than changing your load order. Yeah, flags use it as well, but I don't have any other flags unlocked. Um, you start to unlock flags as you get your, as you recruit companions, if you have SS2 extended. Um, we actually have another set of flags that I don't know if we have them triggered to unlock. We actually have built-in flag support for, who do we have? Um, the Brotherhood of Steel, Minutemen, Institute, Railroad, gunners and raiders but i don't know if we have unlock set up for any of them does anybody know if those trigger ever um i know i didn't see any in my last playthrough but uh maybe i just didn't do enough maybe it's like you have to get far enough along in the main quests because um i think with the exception of raiders and gunners we we those ones we wouldn't 
want trigger set up for because that's something that will become relevant in chapter three. Uh, but for the others, the, I, I would like there to be triggers to unlock them. So does anybody know offhand, is there anything that happens when you're playing where all of a sudden like the Brotherhood or Minutemen flags unlock? Because if not, I need to put that on the list to, to add in. Because we have the support for it. We just need to trigger the unlocks. Oh, do we get another bot while I was rambling there? Hide user. Yep, there we go. Tarmane, my cursed game requires a card reset before every leader assignment. Oof, that is no good. So who who among you is uh, is the chef tomorrow for Thanksgiving? Anyone else? That is my that is my job. I've got a I've got a stock cooking right now. Going to be making. Uh, uh, I'm 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 doing a weird thing this year. I found out I found this YouTube video about uh, butchering the turkey the night before. Like not butchering it as in I took a live turkey and took him out back and shot him. I mean like taking the turkey and I actually tore it apart before I cooked it. Um, I know blasphemy, blasphemy for any of you who like the 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 picturesque carving of the turkey. Um, but the the reason I liked it is a couple of things. I get to cook the carcass right now and get the stock made out of it so I can make like really fresh gravy. I'm a I'm a I'm a cook and my that's one of my favorite things to do outside of making mods I like to cook. Um, and uh, I get to actually cook the dark meat to the correct temperature by having it separate because I can leave it in the oven longer. So I'm really excited about this method. Hope it turns out good. The minimum flag unlock after you made general. Okay, cool. So there are there's a trigger for that at least. <laughs> Helen Q, if you mean taking it from the freezer to the oven, then I'm the chef. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, Jake Snowdrift started a new game, got to HQ when watched last show, and realized why my resources weren't emptying. Changed settings and now building organics like crazy all week. Nice. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing <laughs> from your phrasing, um, but I'm glad uh, I'm glad you got things building because that's uh, that's what we need to see. Or if you're talking about you're getting a whole bunch of organic resources, because yeah, that was my problem. The problem I was running into is we had a bug in the uh, HQ code that was causing it so it would cause like mass amounts of organic materials to generate. I thought we had it fixed. Are you saying that we don't and that you're now having the issue I did in my playthrough? Because that'd be a bummer. Nezzy, I've been cooking and baking while watching the stream. Two pies and stuffing. Very nice. Thanksgiving was last month. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Appropriate username. Uh, in Canada, it was last month. Um, yeah, we have, uh, we've got, uh, my wife's been on a, a dessert making frenzy this week because she knows I get mad if she's in the kitchen on Thanksgiving day when I'm trying to like quickly assemble like a big feast uh so she was just decided this year she would do all of the the baking in advance so that my house is like covered there's like desserts in every room because we just ran out of space to keep them all so there's like there's like right now on the counter there's a uh apple apple what do you call it it's not apple pie it's like uh apple like a no crust apple with like this like crumbly stuff on the top it's called apple crumble is that what it is i don't know i've, I've been tempted all day to just mow into it uh and there's like i think like on the counter across from me i can see a couple boxes of cookies so much cooking going on this week oscar fry i'm helping my mom cook the bird this year we are doing a bacon wrapped and chorizo Spicy ground up pig meat. Yeah, I love chorizo stuffing. Interesting. I'm doing some. I'm making some bacon wrap dates tomorrow. I love those. Uh, I'm gonna try and try and get my five year old to try one. He's so such a picky eater. My my three year old will eat anything and give him. He wants every. He just wants to eat off my plate most of the time. But my five year old super picky. I'm thinking he'd like a bacon wrap date though. It's like it's a bunch of sugar. It's a bunch of salt. No, can't, how can you not like that? Deep dive gaming in my family, the person with the credit card is the cook. <laughs> Jake Snowdrift just had my settings on easy change to hard. Oh yeah, if you change the this was something that uh, CBR Gamer added to the code uh, a few patches ago. If you, uh, go if you change to the uh, if you change your complexity, it rebalances all of your resources and uh will end up giving you a, it ends up being very favorable for you it's like a very favorable upscale like originally i had it where it was like a really terrible upscale where effectively um you would get 
Oh, I didn't know that was in here. Uh, if you if you change your complexity complexity setting to go up, you would always get the worst resource. So, for example, for or anybody who knows how the complexity works, like when you went from uh, uh, simple to to component. All of your component when you upgraded would be wood, and, then, and CPR Gamer didn't like that, which is fair, uh, and changed it so that it's now based on the buildings you have. So if you have a you know a lot of organic materials, then it will lean toward making more organic materials in the conversion, or more rare material building providers, you will get more of those, etc. So that the resources you get kind of better match what you actually have. So that's probably what you ran into. Connect 82 as a kid, I used to eat mushrooms off my dad's plate. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff my 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 little one will he's all about. Just anything. Just you know like uh I'm trying to think of some of the foods he it's hard to judge like what is I don't remember what are normal foods for kids to eat. I just judge it off of like, you know, it anything my five year old won't eat, my that my three year old won't will eat, I always think is like, oh, that must be an odd food for kids. Because my five year old reminds me of like um his, his palate reminds me of like traditional stuff you'd expect kids to like. Like wants to eat chicken nuggets, hot dogs, mac and cheese. Like, you know, the stuff you expect most kids want to eat. Um, and then my three-year-old's like, he's into like pickles and like weird cheeses and mushrooms and basically anything I put in front of him, he'll, he'll gobble it down. And then my five-year-old wants everything to be covered in sugar. So, you know, ketchup, barbecue sauce, anything, anything that adds sweetness is what he wants on all his food. Which seems pretty seems pretty normal. Seems like a pretty normal kid kid thing. I actually and I have like uh, I have pretty strict rules in my house about sugar stuff because I grew up uh, I grew up in the eighties when uh, you know it was everybody just ate a big bowl of Lucky Charms and that was considered fine. But like you know I don't, I don't know if that I don't know if it was still considered fine or if my parents just didn't care. But like now you look at how much sugar that's given them. It's just like Jesus. Uh, so we, uh, I, I, as much as I would love to, to share my childhood of unlimited sugar, I feel like that's feels a little, it feels like now knowing about all the health stuff, it feels like child abuse a bit. So I, I try to do it. I'm like, yeah, I got to feed him at least somewhat. Right. Like can't, like I still let him try lucky charms, but not unlimited access to the, uh, to the box. Like I had. Oh, Donnie Dean, that's what, that's what I, I'm not that into mushrooms. Like I, I like, I do like them. I like them better sauteed in butter and like with a little bit of a, a little bit of caramelization on them. I'll, I'm more likely to eat them, but you know, I like them like in stuff like, uh, uh, uh and now I'm, I'm drawing blanks cause I, you know, I cook all the time and I can't think of the names of anything. Um, like stroganoff, love that. Um, you know, I'll eat mushrooms on, on pizza, no problem. But uh, my wife is all about that, the sauteed mushrooms. Like, she would just eat that as a meal. Yeah, I'm getting hungry too now, talking about all this food, guys. <laughs> I'm going to have to go get a midnight snack here before I continue with you guys. That's why they made us go all the time, because they had to burn off all the excess sugar, right? <laughs> Yeah, still even even like cutting off the you know the breakfast cereal. There's still like so many things that, uh, uh, like even uh, at school that give give them that are just like, man, that's just pure sugar. Like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So I love a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Don't get me wrong, but it's just a bunch of sugar. Yeah, now I'm, I'm like I'm looking at that box of cookies across the room and thinking they wouldn't know if one was gone. Speaking of speaking of all the sugar. <laughs> yeah, I quit drinking soda as well, Nick. It was uh it was like causing me and mostly just cuz I got a spike in my blood sugar and then I would crash hard every time. Like I, I love like a you know having a coke with a piece of pizza or a burger is is wonderful, but um, I, now I can't drink it. Now I have if I have a usually when I get a coke somewhere, like I, I take a couple sips of it, and I'm like, whew, that's so much sugar. I just I got I got out of the habit of have taking that much sugar in every day, and now it tastes weird to have it. Same with like coffee, like putting sugar in my coffee now I can't do anymore. Like I can do like. Uh, you know, once in a while, I'll grab one of those those fancy uh, uh, Starbucks drinks with the where they're just pumped full of sugar. Like they've got their their holiday drinks, like the pumpkin spice latte or the 
I don't know what they're all called, but those, those are pretty good. But otherwise I'm like, uh, just, just put, I'll put a little cream in my coffee, but otherwise I want it pretty close to black. Cause I've just like lost my tolerance for sugar. Is that an age thing? Cause I, I feel like, uh, my parents never, never were, well, my mom was, my, my dad was never much into sweets when he was like, when I was growing up, but now as an, an adult, I think, or like as an, like a, as a, a grandpa, like he, now he, I feel like he eats a ton more sweets. Is there like a, is there like a cycle there? Do you go through like middle age and you lose your taste for sugar and then it comes back again? Or is that a person by person thing? I know I've got, I got a few of you in the audience who have gone through it. What's, what's the deal with, with, uh, with sweetness? Is it, is it a, is it a thing that changes throughout your life? It goes up and down your, your tolerance and love of sugar. Uh, wreck and sleep, please. It's five in the morning. Too much food talk. <laughs> it's five in the morning. It's time to make some breakfast, man. That's a good time to go make some eggs. Not crazy. I'm using Pra's instant vault as my training settlement in place for named ones. Currently at 49 settlers. That's awesome. I love I love hearing about the the crazy uh, the pushing the limits of this game. Lachlan Williams coffee and tea with sugar is too sweet and fatty. I've ne I've never liked sugar in tea. That always tasted weird to me. Like I think tea has like no, oh, it has pretty interesting flavors going on. I don't really need. I've never needed sugar in it. Skywise, I've been addicted to soda my whole life. Yeah, I'm, I was there with you. I used to. Uh, like I remember in my like after I graduated high school, um, I had a, a I lived with a couple of friends and we would literally buy we would go to the store and buy pallets of Pepsi and just like have them around like just drink so much so much soda, um, and then I don't remember when I cut it out but it was I was just getting I was like it, so many times I was just like falling asleep in the middle of the day and I couldn't get work done. And, uh, when I had, when I, I think it was when I had, when I got a job, I actually liked, and then I was like, oh, now I feel, you know, you have a job you don't care about, like feeling sleepy in the middle of the day is whatever. But when I'm trying to actually be productive and then it was like, uh, I got to a point where I was just, I, I was just irritated with myself that I was falling, that I was getting sleepy when I went, had stuff I wanted to do. I think that's what, what finally, uh, got me to cut it. Sweetness tolerance hasn't changed for me, says Canuck. It definitely has for me, but I, I think part of that is because I cut it for a while. Like if I had never cut sugar, I think I it would have just kept doing it the same intake every day. But cutting it for, um, like at one point, I think I went with almost zero sugar for a full year, which was a weird experience uh, at first. Like I was just like craving sugar all the time. Um, and then after like a few weeks of it, I just like didn't crave it at all. And then when I came back to it, then like everything all of a sudden was super, super sweet. And now I've now I have trouble uh, with too much too much sweets just make it makes me feel not good. Uh, Oscar Fry, honest question: When it comes to hot dogs for a quick meal, microwaving them or boiling them in water or boiling them in a cheap light beer um, for a quick meal. So when I cook hot dogs for the kids, so I I found a a, a trick from a, a local little um, uh, uh, like diner here. That's where I'm not going to say the name of because I don't like talking about my real life location. Um, is uh, uh, the trick that they do that I, I really like is they actually do like a mix, but they put they put oil in the bottom of a of a uh, pan, uh, and then they boil and then they put a little bit of water on top, which is super dangerous to do this, but it comes out really good. Is they kind of like boil it for a little bit because that plumps up the hot dog. So they and then when the water evaporates, then there's oil and then it gets fried after the so it gets plumped and fried at the same time, and, and it doesn't take that much longer than just boiling it. That's what I like to do. But you got to use a, um, a grease cover because mixing oil and water is super dangerous when you're cooking. You can get all sorts of splatters. Um, but uh, but it tastes really good. So don't, you know, maybe don't do that. I don't want to get sued here. But like that's how I do it because I think it tastes good. But um, uh, I'd say, yeah, if you're, if you're not going to do that, not going to risk your risk burns, um, I don't know. I'd probably pan fry them, I think would be the... I mean, grilling is like... That that doesn't take long if you got a grill ready to go. Like, you don't have to get it that hot to cook to to get some some nice scorch marks on a on a dog. That tastes even better than uh, I don't know. That's a tough call actually. Grilling or, or frying. I don't know which I like better. Deep dive gaming. I grew up drinking soda. I switched drinking soda to coffee. Managed to give up soda for a while. Now I need coffee and soda. Whoops. <laughs> I will. So. So one of the sodas I haven't lost my taste for, which is still exceptionally good to me, is uh, 
Mountain Dew Baja Blast. Like I got, I used to have, I used to have a massive Taco Bell addiction in like my early twenties. Cause I lived across the street, literally across the street from one. Like I go walk there. Um, and like a crunch wrap and a Baja blast still to this day gives me so many good feels. Like it's just, is like, this is, this is comfort food for me. The only one that boils your hot, you're not the only one that boils your hot. I used to, boil. I still, I mean, I still boil the hot dogs, Oscar. That's not weird. I think that's pretty normal. It is, um, it t- takes longer than microwaving them for sure. I think the thing is, is it doesn't, they don't really taste that much better boiled than they do microwaved. So then it's like, you might as well just microwave them if that's what you're going to do. Maybe that's why, maybe that's why you feel weird. Not a lot of people do it, but I think right on the packaging, it says, uh, like on most of like the, the, the big brands of hot dogs, it'll say on there, like if they're thawed, just microwave them. Like, I think that's the recommended cooking method now. Sonic Phil, I'm drinking some Baja Blast Zero right now. Right on. I I'm not. I can't drink the. I, I wish I could drink the zero sugar stuff. Um, just to get best of both worlds of enjoying the flavor. But all those zero sugar things with the where they all have the fake sweeteners in them. They all every one of them. Well, that's not true. There's one that doesn't, but nobody uses it. The, most of them make my stomach feel awful. Like I like I just feel like physically ill when I drink those fake sugars. Something and I'm just doesn't agree with my stomach. But there's like a new type of sweetener called. Uh, it's, it's sugar alcohol, but it has another name. It starts with an E. It's like erythritol, rith, something like that. Um, and it's in a lot of foods that are branded for for keto. And that stuff doesn't make my stomach hurt. So that's like, oh, man, I mean, somebody's invented like the, the miracle product for me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go off the rails on sweetness if somebody starts putting that in mainstream products. I think it's expensive, though, which is why it hasn't shown up in everything. Nezzy, my addiction is coffee. I am also a night coffee drinker. Can have a cup and go right to bed, no problem. Me too. High five. I am all. I'm all about that. I like the. You know, not only am I am I like I'm looking over those cookies. I'm thinking, man, a cookie and another cup of coffee. Oh, that would be fantastic. And I could go right to bed in in the next twenty minutes after drinking that and eating that. I don't know, but actually, I don't know about the cookie. <laughs> I'm not usually a. I don't usually do night sweets. Um, the uh, the coffee though, hundred percent. I'm with you there. I could I could rock another cup of coffee right now and go to bed in half an hour. Jason Lokrantz, I think they've shown that artificial sugars wreak havoc on the gut biome, so that makes sense. Yeah, I definitely I've I've had uh, I got I've got a sensitive sensitive tummy. I love me some spicy food, like love it, love it. There's I mean like I, they're within limit. I'm I I feel like the like the Carolina Reaper thing is is too much. I don't know why why people want to punish themselves like that. Like that doesn't feel good at all. Um, but like you know the the feel of like a jalapeno or or habanero or um, you know, some of these like peppers that have a nice flavor, like love that. But, uh, most of them, as soon as I eat them, like my stomach is just like, nope, <laughs> nope, 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 nope. JC one ward. I fully built our, our sanctuary in Abernathy. I can now run through the triangle of death with no crashing. Thank you for the persistence. Oh, that's amazing. That is awesome. Um, yeah, I think the, uh, I, I honestly think that more of the crashing than, so I think the, the triangle of death. You know, we always we always talk about it like it's gonna guarantee crashing. So there's something that that like I've noticed since Buff Out came out. We used to think that most of the crashes were because uh, the engine couldn't handle the load of textures, which is true. Fallout 4 uses DirectX 11 and has a limited draw call count, which is like how many textures it can render on items simultaneously. Um, but I I find that that doesn't actually cause crashes as much as we thought because I've looked at a lot of Buff Out logs people have sent me. The the most common two that I see now are power grid crashes is number one for sure. And number two now it seems to be uh, pathing like nav mesh issues, um, which is one of the reasons that I've kind of shifted my, like I've, I've gone into full, I hate scrap everything and any any of its ilk because when they when you break down the pre-combines, it, for some reason it causes weird issues with the nav mesh. I think uh, because in settlements, the game dynamically generates a nav mesh, I think it has trouble when there's that many elements. Um, and so like, that's like number two cause of crashes now. So the triangle of death, I think once you have the power grid issue solved, which, you know, we, we have it, we're attacking it from multiple angles right now. Like we're attacking it because workshop framework by default will auto repair grids that are, that it detects are corrupt. Um, and then also that, uh, uh, we have workshop framework is persisting everything. So it's less likely that you'll end up with bad items in your grid. 
So yeah, I could see that a lot of folks who had the triangle of death crash, it was actually from power issues rather than from uh, too many items issues. That's definitely a, a possibility. Uh, I know C Dante is actually uh, working on some better power code. He was telling me he's going to have an update to the workshop framework DLL that will uh, let us do some uh, better repairing of power grids. So we might have even better code for, for maintaining a stable grid on PC soon, which is going to be awesome. Oscar Fry, skip the cookie, have some coffee and pie. <laughs> if we, I don't know if we have any pie in the house. There's been a lot of dessert cooking. I don't think I saw pie. I'm the only one in my family who likes pie, so I would be, so it would be an odd thing to see anybody make here. Uh, not crazy. I stopped drinking soda a few years ago. Wife gave me a Coke a week or so ago. You will not believe how bad it tasted. <laughs> yeah, I feel, I feel like it's, uh, it's too, too much sugar now. Like I have a few sips of it, and it's like it's so much sugar. And, I'm, and it's obviously the same amount. I don't think they've changed the recipe for from Coke for, since the 90s when they, or was it the 90s when they tried to do new Coke and then they retreated? Um, but uh, the, uh, but yeah, I don't think they've changed the recipe. So I think most of my tolerance has gone down. The dining day in so many restaurants in Texas, like hide the fact that they use peppers in them. My last encounter was house barbecue sauce with ghost peppers. Oh, that should be illegal. Get that out of here. Secret ghost peppers. I don't think so. I remember I went to uh, uh, like a friend's Thanksgiving party, I don't know, about eight, nine years ago. And uh, he gave me uh, some, he said he had a new hot sauce he really wanted me to try and it was ghost pepper. And it, like literally my throat, my throat started to close because I literally just like took a spoonful of it. Not really because he was just trying, he didn't realize that, I don't think he thought that anything like that would happen to folks. Like, man, you can't, you can't surprise folks with a with those kind of peppers, like anything like ghost pepper and hotter, like the number of, what is the, what's the, the measurement they use? What's that scale scale? Was it? I can't remember the name of it. Um, but, uh, yeah, once you get into certain levels, it's like, that's, I don't know. I don't think that's right to, to just drop onto somebody, uh, without warning. Uh, Kilo, have you tried Mexican Coke with the real sugar? Yeah, I love those those bottles of Coke. Although I I think I saw a YouTube video recently. I saw the thumbnail and I didn't want to watch it because I'm like, no, I want to go on believing that it's that that I think the thing was that it's not actually real sugar. That was the the video somebody investigated and like the the Mexican Coke thing is a lie, but it does in my head it tastes better even if it's even if it's not true if it's not really real sugar. I still yeah I love the the glass bottle Mexican Coke really tasty. But again, same problem with, with my, is my, uh, after two or three sips, I'm just like, okay, I've had, I've had like my sugar fill for the day. Uh, it's just it's so sweet. Who knew that the, the Sim Settlement stream would, uh, would, uh, devolve in, we, we, we almost just be hungry. <laughs> We've been talking about food for 40 minutes, uh, and it's making me hungry and hungry. I'm going to be able to eat so much tomorrow. Oh, I love Thanksgiving. Oscar Fry, I take it you don't like ghost peppers if that, so I guess you shouldn't tell you I use ghost pepper mouthwash. <laughs> yeah, not, I think, I think ghost peppers are, get to the range of where it's like just not pleasant spice, where it's just like, it's just, un, it's just, for me, I'm, I'm sure some people have the tolerance for it, but, um, yeah, that gets to the range of like, no, now I'm not having fun anymore. Like I, I like spicy, but I want it to like, I still want to be able to taste the foods it's accompanying. Whereas I feel like once I get to ghost pepper and beyond, it's just like all it is is heat and I don't taste any of the food, which is like, oh, then why am I eating? The burn your face off scale. Yeah, there's <laughs> pretty much. I know there's like a, there's numbers for it. And I think like the Carolina Reaper is like 200,000 on this scale or something like that. Like some of the, the scale is crazy. Like it goes down to like, you know, something like, you know, the, like kids would say like a jalapeno pepper is real spicy and it's like a hundred on this scale. And then you have these ones that go up to, uh, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands where it's like, I don't know what this scale is, but that's crazy that the numbers range go that broad in range. Scoville scale. Yeah, there it is. Uh, the scale measures the amount of capsaicin. I don't know how you say that. Uh, the chemical compound that causes spicy heat in a pepper and assigns it a number rating in Scoville heat units. There we go. There it is. Oscar Fry, I have a, I have a Emoti Mexican Coke bottle next to me. I can prove they have cane sugar in them. All right. They've had, Sonic Phil says they had to change to corn syrup. No! 
I want, I watched another video. I get sucked into YouTube rabbit holes sometimes when I just need background stuff while I'm coding. I, I saw one where somebody, um, somebody was making a, a video about how to make sugar from beets. And apparently in the U S like most of our powdered white sugar comes from beets now instead of from sugar cane. They found it's like because of certain import laws or something that it's cheaper for them to make sugar, make granulated sugar out of beets now than it is out of sugar cane, which is crazy. Nick Carter, do you still eat candy bars? No, I can't. I find most candy is no good to me anymore. Like, um, there are a couple exceptions. Uh, like obviously I have tons of candy in the house. I have kids. Uh, I'm go trick or treating. The only candies I've found that I still like have a palate for are, um, like little, like peanut butter candies, like not, but not Reese's. I don't like Reese's anymore, but like, uh, uh, peanut butter M&Ms are still good to me. And, um, like fancy candies. Like sometimes people will give me the, um, Oh, I'm not going to say this right. I think it's it's like Italian or something. Like far, Is it Ferro Rocher? Something like that. They're like these little... Like those are good to me. Um, but like most of like Snickers and Reese's and a regular M&M's. Like none of those do it for me. I'm just like taste them. I'm like nope. Don't want anything to do with that. Get that out of here. The Abo Brick Show. Bringing us back on topic. What is your favorite settlement site? Um, I mean, the one I build at most is Sanctuary. Um, I really like Starlight, though. I like that this is big and flat and open, but still got some, like, cool details to it. Like, you still got the the screen and the um, the uh, projector room. Like, I, I, I like this settlement. It's nice to build in. Um, I, but I also, it depends on whether I, it depends on your question in, in what form. Like, is it, do am I doing the building? Because that changes my answer. If somebody else is doing the building, I think, like, Hangman's Alley is one of the coolest settlements there is. Um, because people who figure out how to do it do really cool stuff and, and really work within that space. Um, so like, I like that settlement a lot for that reason. Um, I also have like, a, for some reason I really like Outpost Zimonia, even though it's a real pain in the butt to build. Um, I just like the look of that place. I think the, it's cool that it's all built into those hills and it's got that big, uh, antenna in it. Um, I, d I definitely, my favorites tend to be like up in this quadrant of the map because I have more games that like I stopped before I got further than this than I do that go out here. So I have way less experience in the settlements down in this area. Like I know a lot of people love like Castle and uh, uh, Spectacle Island, but I feel like most of the time, like I my, my end my save before I make it to the, down that far on the map. And I tend to build in the settlements that I get early game. Um, so yeah, I, really, I, it's, I think it depends on the, you know, if, if I'm doing the building or not. If I'm doing the building, I think, I think Sanctuary and Starlight are my favorites. Sunshine probably like close third, which is why Starlight and Sunshine ended up on my uh, on my choice list. Because I want I want them, especially because I do most of my building with some settlements now. I need a settlement with a lot of space, otherwise, because you know I'm not a fan of interior plots, as I've uh, as I've made well known on this stream. Uh, so I tend to have to build mostly with big two by two or or occasionally three by three. So I need a decent sized settlement to actually do that. But when other people are doing it, I like the more crammed small settlements because they get real creative, like, you know, forced into that situation. Like Jamaica Plain, another one that ends up results in some really cool designs from people who are clever uh, about their building because they have no choice. It's like, if you're going to build here, this place is tight. I mean, have to make it work. Donnie Dane, pretty sure that worldwide most sugar is made from sugar beets since they have a much higher concentration of sugar in them um, since they've been bred for that. Yeah, but I I can't imagine they have a higher concentration than sugar cane, right? I don't remember. I remember I just watched a video recently about that, but like I said, it was in the background. I was barely listening, and it just the the part that caught my attention was like that most sugar most granulated sugar comes from beets in the U.S. I was like, what? That's wild. The Abel Brick Show. Oh, I love Outpost Z. Yeah, it's a cool settlement. It's just it's it's, it's got a nice. I don't know, something about it that I like, even though it's hard to build in, especially for SS2. It's hard to build in for SS2, but still cool settlement. Oscar Fry, do you think you can make like a floating settlement in the water? I mean, you could. You would have to build lots of platforms and stuff, but I don't see why you couldn't. Um, a lot of times uh, I've seen folks do in um, tapping to Boathouse, build like a bunch of, bunch of platforms out there and build out over the water because it's got a pretty good chunk of the settlements covers the, the the building area covers into the water i don't think there are, are there any what's another i know there's a mod added settlement that's like 
over i think over by one of these lakes over here that i think the encompasses the entire lake that'd be a good one to try then and if you want i think that's actually that might be the one that we're doing for the city plan contest right now sugar cane and sugar beets are about the same with sugar beets being able to be grown at a much wider area interesting yeah because aren't, aren't beets one of the they're they're a root vegetable right so you can kind of grow them in a lot different more a lot more climates and year round right like that's one of the things that it's like why you know things like uh potatoes and stuff are are very common in like uh, uh russia and and uh, uh northern europe because you can grow them in cold temperature or am i or am i getting my stuff wrong i ironically i grew up on a farm but we we did not grow anything creative it was all uh, we grew like hay and corn and soybeans because that's pretty much what people grow now <laughs> because it makes a lot of money from governance, government subsidies. Uh, Dundee and I really like building at Somerville Place mid-game. Um, yeah, Somerville Place has got some, some uh, got a good amount of space because it's got the mix of the flat space and then you can also go up that hill. Yeah, Somerville is a pretty cool place. I don't, I, again, I, because I, I tend to do all my building early game, I never make it out to build any of those. I should make an effort one time to just like do what we did today. Just like beeline it for a specific settlement and start my playthrough from that part. It's just obviously hard to do in the southern parts of the world because they're level, they're level locked to, uh, you know, like they have a minimum level down there where that's much higher than you are when you start. So Sonic film originally from Southeast Wyoming and sugar beets are a huge business there. Oh, cool. I'm correct about beets. Okay. Uh, JR, if you have time tonight, how does the HQ logistics tasks of missions to build settlements work? I tried the two mission options, but when I went to the settlement, nothing has been built. Well, I can actually show you that because we did, I think I did one. Um, I gotta just change characters here. We gotta go to. Let's see. Was it this? Yeah, I think this should work. Element thirty nine. End of session. We'll try this. We'll see what happens. Yeah, we don't work that plot. Let's. Hopefully, we don't. It doesn't matter if we break the uh, the save while we're playing it right now because we're not gonna save again. Um, so let's go check. So I just did it. Does anybody remember what settlement I did it for? Was it this one? Was it slog? I think it might have been slog, which we're in right now. So let me ask you this, JR. Did it say that the task completed yet? Because it actually takes three days. Um, so when your people, your when you go out to the settlement, because uh, we ran into this with uh, we force upgraded uh, County Crossing and we ran into one of our characters. We had a ventilator it was hanging around County Crossing. Um, you should see the NPC, one of your HQ NPCs from that department should be kind of milling around the settlement. Uh, and then after a couple of days, you should get the notification that it finished and then the construction will start. So maybe that's just it. Oh, does time scale carry over between loading different saves? Let's see. Uh, get, all right, so let's do help time scale three. Oh yeah, I did not know that, that it carry, it's, it's a, it's set while you're, that's interesting. Set time scale 220. I didn't know that that was a play session variable. I thought that was a save variable. Very interesting. Hey, Boo Brick Show. I like the Christmas decorations in Sim Settlements too. Cool. I'm glad. I'm glad you like them. I actually was one of the things I had been hoping. Uh, we never. It's never happened. Um, I had always hoped that somebody would they would capture somebody's imagination and we'd see an add-on pack with an expansion to the decorations because like we we put in a pretty bare bones amount of different decorations, uh, but the system's injectable. So I thought it'd be cool. It would be would have been awesome to see um, some add-ons with that stuff. And unfortunately, I think one of the things. Um, with SS2 versus SS1 is SS1 came in when the game was still like widely popular. Um, and so there were still a lot of new people getting into modding and that has slowed down considerably since SS2 came out. So while we got a lot of add-on packs because a lot of people we ported theirs, um, we have far less people starting it for the first time. So I think like had we had all of the potential options for new add-on packs available with different stuff they could add in SS1, there's just the the selection available at this at this stage would be unbelievable Mod 142 if 
Uh, if it was a save game variable, it would carry over after saving, and it doesn't. That yeah, I thought it. I thought it was a save game variable. I didn't, so so any does any of you guys play? Does any guys? How do you say that? Do any of you guys play with a with a uh, altered time scale? Like difference. it's just part of your save. Because if you do, does that mean you have to every play session you gotta reset it again when you start up? So like for like I know I've heard of people playing at like a time scale of like six, so it's closer to a real time. Any of you guys do that? You should know. People have been complaining. But yeah, I thought it. Yeah, I thought it was a uh, save game variable because it's um. It's just a global. It's like a thing called a gl uh, global setting, but I guess it's probably like maybe it's like um, a, a, there's a, two different types of them. There's um, there's a a const type, which means that it basically like it always matches whatever is set up in the creation kit, and then there's the type that's meant to dynamically change. Um, and then I think some of there's a third type you can't create, which maybe that's where time scale is. Like the um, the things that control the the game hour. So for example, like right now. Like if I look at, if I go in here, this is like just engine level stuff I happen to know. Um, but you see like it's 1148. There's actually a global called game hour. So if I go set game hour to uh, 11. So right now it's 11 p.m. and it uses 24 hour time. So that's technically 23. If I change it to 11, like it'll actually change it to the middle of the day. So now it's like 11 a.m. Um, but that doesn't, and so that does get stored in the save, but it's, it's, control like obviously like just changing that global number which is just a number stored in the game and we like we use those globals for all sorts of things like most of our settings like when you go into the ss2 and change settings it's just changing a little number um, but there's some of them that are hooked up to the engine level so time scale must be like that too or it's um it's handled a little bit differently than a traditional global Uh, Nick Carter, have you ever played, tried a no vats playthrough? I mean, most of my playthroughs are mostly no vats. Like, generally, I use vats more as a uh, try and find the target, and then I quickly exit. This is the first. This is actually my first playthrough where I'm intending on using the vats mechanic and gonna spec into it. Usually, I don't do that. Um, and I've played. This is like my tenth playthrough, maybe probably more. <laughs> uh, I, I actually probably have way less playthroughs than you'd expect because again, I spend so much of my time modding instead of playing. Um, so this is, but I've literally never done a, a bats focused playthrough. So this is going to be interesting. Oscar Fry, I've wanted to be, I've heard that game can break even at time scale six. I, so I was, I remember reading that that was like the lowest you could safely go that people have figured out from playing creation engine games over the years, but I don't, I don't know. Same for TAI and other commands. Those don't hold between saves. Okay. Interesting. Donnie Dane, just an update on World Repop. I'm pretty sure I have the system level stuff worked out, uh, but I'm really slow at the design part. Yeah, that's fair. It takes a while. It takes a while to get good designs, and then, you know, it depends on how uh, detailed you want to be or uh, how meticulous you are with your placements of everything. And then one of the one of the things that's like a, a surprising learning curve is learning the naming scheme that Bethesda uses. Like, it takes a while to, like, you know, you might think, like, I really want a box here. And then you search for box, and it doesn't. you don't find the one you want. Like, you know, searching for box won't bring you up like those classic like wooden things. You got to find, you got to search for crate. Uh, so some of it is just like figuring out what Bethesda's name scheme is to find all the items you want. That's like half the, half the battle in the design side. Sunday and I have some free time coming up where I can work on it a bit more. Awesome. I'm looking forward to seeing the first world repot mod. Oh, did you guys see we have the first like big HQ add-on? Like I, I almost wanted to like cancel my plans and just show off that as as part of the stream today, um, because I was so excited to see that Captain Laserbeam, who does um, uh, jam pads, did a HQ add-on. Um, so there's like a there's now an add-on pack that adds a bunch of stuff to HQ. I think that um, you have to have a couple of other mods to use it. Like it uses Creative Clutter and. Um, I think it uses some of Monkey's mods, like the stained glass mod and the aquariums, but um, so it probably adds a lot of really pretty things to HQ if you uh, if you're looking to stylize your HQ a little bit. Orange Poppy, where did you get the goggles for dog meat? Those are any generic goggle you find off of uh, a raider you can equip on dog meat. It's awesome. Where is dog meat? Doggo, where you at? 
I think they're just called welding goggles or wraparound goggles. They're a vanilla item. They're like in the, you don't even have to have DLC. They're in the base game. Come here, come here, come here. Stop running. Hey. Oh man, he's got a lot of stuff for me. Yeah, just welding goggles. These are just like, you'll find raiders with them all the time. And for whatever reason, Bethesda decided dogs should be able to wear them and it's awesome. Oh, somebody beat me to it. Uh, some that they're uh, default goggles. So speaking, so you guys are talking about the boulder hat you can put on uh, Codsworth. Um, one of the things I know somebody on the the team is working on are a series of hats for robots um, that I think you're going to see get plugged into SS2 Extended one day, you're going to see the weird patch note of added a collection of hats you can <laughs> equip on your robots. Because somebody was just uh, really fascinated by the idea that you could put the bowler hat on. I was like, well, why not more hats? Let's give robots more love. Same to you, Jason. Happy Thanksgiving. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to all my fellow Americans. Uh, it's, uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of that holiday. Um, I probably, I don't know why. I think it's good memories. Like I, I like cooking, so that's part of it. Um, and I grew up, I grew up in a huge family. So I have like, um, great memories of like getting together with all my cousins and stuff when I was a kid. So Thanksgiving's always been, always been a favorite holiday of mine. Even though it's really just a meal. <laughs> like it's like, it's a weird holiday that to get hyped about. Um, but, uh, uh I love it. Like it's one of those ones where I, I'm, we're having trouble selling it to the kids. Like they like they don't even remember it last year. It was such a non-event for them. Uh, and like uh, you know, we tell them oh, they're just like they want to know when Christmas is coming. <clears throat> Mod hundred forty two wanting to see more of the tank treads for robots myself and Mama Murphy's robo chair. Yeah, there's plenty that that stuff. There's already great mods for. Um, just not enough hats for robots. So we're gonna we're gonna fill that little niche. Um, what's uh, who is it? Uh, M150 I think has done some pretty crazy robot attachments out there. You can grab. <laughs> Nezzy, yes, about to plop cowboy hats on all the robot pals. I don't know what I'm. I'm pretty sure robot hat or uh, cowboy hat is on there because I know we have that. Um, the minute, because I'm, yeah, it's got to be. Well, it'll be the Minuteman hat at least. I don't know if we have a. Is there a cowboy hat in Fallout Four or the DLC? Because my bet is that the uh, the folks working on it are going to make it so that just about every hat you can find in the base game and automatron will be equipable by robots when we finally add that to the patch. Yeah, M150 is awesome. He's got some crazy weird stuff out there, and he just open sources everything. Like, um, one of the, that's one of the things I hope to do when uh, when I finish SS2 is uh, allow people to use a lot of the stuff from it. I have to be careful because of rights. Like, some of the stuff we have in SS2, we have permission to use from others. Uh, and then, of course, there's all the different people who worked on SS. You know, like, it's going to be slippery there. So, I, like, I don't think I'll ever be able to do, like, an open, like, you can use anything. But it'll be, like, I can at least say, hey, you can use all the stuff that I personally created. Like, here's the buildings I created or here's the scripts I've created. And you can use them. Because um, I'd like to give back like that. Because that's such such an awesome thing that some folks do. It's actually making me, you know, thinking about awesome things people do. Now I suddenly have the urge. I want to go run a city plan just to, like, let you guys hear the new song if you haven't already. Actually, I guess I could just play it on YouTube. I don't have to do it in the city. It's just fun to see what the city... Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll start a tour. Maybe I'll get lucky and I'll get it. And if I don't, I'll cancel out and start another tour. Where is my city planner's desk? Wiseman is a great man and a great leader. Oh, wrong button. Take a tour. Let's see if we get lucky and we get... If we spin up the song... Okay, that's Fall of War theme, so we'll exit out. So I, I'm pretty sure it random rolls the song every time, so we should be able to just keep trying. I think we're really making a difference here.
Why did I just get XP? The dog, oh, there's our, there's our, so that second song, that's the song that we had written for some settlements. I used to live in Diamond So now, I guess there's, it's random, so we're not Diamond guaranteeing we get it this time. Why I'm just hopeful. Every time I take a tour, I get XP? Is that what's going on here? That's a weird bug. Yeah, here we go. Age of Wonder. This song is amazing. This is by Scott Buckley. If you are want some if you want some really awesome music to use for a project or just to listen to, Scott Buckley's website is the way to go. Yes, there's a cowboy hat in Nuka World DLC. Ah, unfortunately we're not parenting to Nuka World, so that will not be one of them. Mod 142, I remembered. When I have a caravan network, but some parts are only connected by provisioner, the reports are borked, I assume because of provisioner. Yeah, unfortunately the um the provisioner does not connect the sim settlements network so uh it causes issues there that might be one of those things where i may uh, eventually override um we were actually having a discussion in we have a channel where we discuss um script issues for sim settlements and like one of the things that's come up recently is um networks in uh in some settlements and like we're discussing like things things we may do to change them because they're so important to the gameplay loop that like when they break it's pretty catastrophic so we've been discussing some alternate ways to do things and that's a potential um change we could make would be to like recode it so that vanilla provisioners also work as a caravan services connection that might be something that happens in the future i don't know we're still still in still in talks about what we could change E-Town CS Go. What is this mod even? So this mod has become a lot of things. Um, it started out as one day I was building a settlement meticulously and was thinking about having to do that much work in all of the settlements because my first playthrough I built up all the settlements and then so naturally my second playthrough I was going to do that too. Um, but I had a whole lot of mod tools. I had like tools that let me do real detailed work, and I realized I was never going to get them done. So then I started to code a mod to solve the problem. Well, since then, it's turned into a story mod because we I, I hated the fact that settlements are optional and like not important to the story. So we made a story that settlements are very important to, and uh, it's very like, we've been very fortunate. We've got very phenomenal voice actors so the a lot of folks really hold our quest line up in high regard because we've got really high quality voice acting um and then it's uh it's a ton of building so you have uh uh automated building so you can set it up so that your settlements build themselves or you can get into real detailed management gameplay with we've kind of like kind of got a city simulator system where like different needs change over time and you unlock different buildings and um, really detailed there, so it's it's a lot of the mods a lot of things. It's a very very deep mod But uh, as I've been showing with today's playthrough You can also make it a super easy mod um, There's a there's a setting called automated where it effectively makes it so You just kind of build whatever you want and it automatically makes so you put down like a square on the ground And it'll turn into a big building over time like and you can just use that use it for that just to make uh, fancy settlements with minimal effort Nick Carter, you mentioned making patches for mods once. Which mods would you like to patch? Um, I mean, like, basically any mod that has, you know, a certain threshold of user count. Like, those are the ones I'd like to patch. Would be like, you know, if we have a conflict with uh, a mod that half of you are using, then I would like to fix those. I have none in particular in mind. I would just like to make sure that, um, you know, we're that we work with as many playthroughs as possible. So there's going to be, you know, occasionally there's going to be some niche mod that's doing something that fundamentally breaks ours, and we're never going to be as compatible with it, and there's not much I can do about that. Um, and if it's, or the, I could do something about it, but it would be a lot of work to help, you know, 100 people. Like, that's going to be harder for me to swallow. I try to put my efforts into things that are going to impact as many people as possible. 
Connect plus one for provision or integration. Caravan plots have never connected for my heavy mod playthrough. Oh, that's a bummer. Though I don't, if it's not working with caravan service, I don't know that it's going to work any better with provisioners. Like, because our the code under the hood would be the same. It would just be a matter of looking at provisioners in the same way we treat caravan services. Guardian MF, as far as I know, the time scale is set at the start of a new game, but you can use the set time scale command to change it, and that value is carried when you save. Interesting. Well, I'm getting conflicting reports there. I actually don't know. Um, I mean, we could find out by exiting the game right now and loading it back up. But. The Able Brick Show. Do you play 76? I have played 76. Um, I, I liked the quests. It was really fun to play through all that. Um, but then I don't like the end game of 76. I think the end game is just an MMO and I have no desire to play MMOs ever. Um, mostly because I burned myself out on them long ago. So there you go. There's the, uh, there's the new track we added in recently that, uh, I am en enamored with. I feel like it felt real good for, for, uh, during city plan build up, especially if you get it on like a level three that's like building up pretty hugely or and if you check out some of the um the master's contest entries from the summer uh using that song it oh, feels so good speaking of the master stuff um my my apologies i've i've, I've messaged them all to apology apologize for this but it's been taking so long for us to produce the master's videos it's just been it's just been a, a series of unfortunate events that uh, have happened with those, and uh, I've learned a valuable lesson this year in how not to do, <laughs> not to handle those. Um, so hopefully, uh, hopefully next year um, we'll have uh, more folks working on those instead of having one person try and do them all because it's just too much work. Uh, so hopefully next year we'll get them done much quicker. Lonely Doggo, is there any plans to do anything with Nuka World or Four Harbor? No, uh, mostly because there is a technical problem that comes up uh, when you parent to all the DLC. If you're doing um, any, if you're doing mods with like a lot of um, world building, so a lot of you know building new locations and such, uh, there's this technical problem that comes up with the creation kit where it can't load all the records. Uh, we're already running into a technical issue of just by adding automatron to it it take it makes the load time for the creation kit almost double um when we're using the um version control from the creation kit so like it it just makes our lives a lot harder and every plugin we add will make that time take longer and you know that might not seem like a big deal you just well you load the creation kit once and then you work well the creation kit crashes a lot so um it's more like you know you load it every so like adding you know minutes onto your session like when it crashes and it derails you like when you're on a roll like that's pretty that's a pretty big deal so like even if we could solve the technical problem of the um the th the form limit which i know that some mod teams have like uh, uh cascadia and um uh i think miami like they they're all using like all dlcs required and they've figured out a workaround for the creation kit issue but i don't want to deal with the load times when we tap when we add in version control too it would just be such a such a motivation killer so we are not planning on doing anything with those two dlc kilo does having cinematic mode enabled throttle city plan building down i've noticed the cinematic mode builds a plan very slow compared to having the option off uh, it doesn't throttle it down, but you're, the game has a limit for how much script processing can happen in each frame. Um, so just by the nature, you know, like doing the cinematic mode requires nonstop scripts to run. It has to constantly like move your camera around every few seconds, like every half a second. Um, so it's pretty intensive, which is why that option is actually disabled by default on Xbox, or it's supposed to be. And uh, um, yeah, you can definitely get performance gains by by turning off cinematic mode. There's also any of you guys on, on PC who's are if you're using F4SE, we found out also that uh, uh, using those mods that uh, uncap your frame rate also improve script performance, which makes sense because the the frame the uh, uh, scripts are, are frame locked. So if you uncap your frame rate, you you also unlock Papyrus to work more heavily, which is pretty cool. 
Abel Brickshaw, are you following the Big Apple 4 mods like Mammy and Fallout 4 Envy? I mean, I'm following them in as much as, like, if Juicehead puts out an update video, I'll watch it. But other than that, not really. Um, you know, it's it's hard to get hyped about those mods because they take so long and so few have actually made it to fruition. Like, and I'm not, obviously, like, Fallout 4 is the newest uh bethesda game with mod with a mod scene so you know hard to judge those but you can look at the track record of like all the the other follow games and uh and elder scrolls games and how few of those big projects that were announced actually make it to completion you know like i think you could count on one hand the number of like mega mod projects for bethesda games that have actually released so you know i just not holding my breath for, for any of those big projects. Like um, the one I'm most excited about now is actually Fallout London because they actually showed like, you know, a good 20 minute chunk of finished gameplay and they've announced that they're releasing next year. So like, that's amazing. Like that one I can get excited about, but the others are all just like, eh, I mean, that looks really awesome and I hope to play it one day, but there's no sign that it's actually going to get released. Uh, Lonely Doggo, that's unfortunate. It would have been cool to see a raid on Nuka World, possibly, and then building it up, sort of like how Concord is. Speaking about Concord, any more plans for that? Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff we could do with Nuka World or with Far Harbor, um, but there's also so much stuff we can still do with, with, uh, the Commonwealth, so, like, I don't feel like we're, you know, if we, if we spread ourselves thin to go to those other continents, then we leave stones unturned in the Commonwealth, if that makes sense. Um... As far as Concord, no, I think Concord is pretty much at, as far as we're going to take it. Um, like, the, the only things that have come up as, like, maybes are, um, you know, having somebody move in to, to Jake's workshop after he moves out would be cool. Um, though, we, we're not, that's not something that's being developed actively. It's just probably one of those things where if we decide we want to keep working on the mod after Chapter 3, like, to develop content for it, which that's not currently the plan, um... But it, things might change. Like there's, you know, it really depends on the life circumstances of everybody involved and everybody's excitement level. You know, if like Starfield is a flop somehow, like if they screw up like they did with the launch of 76, then that might inspire us to stick around longer with Fallout 4. Um, you know, there's the things that could happen, but uh, that's one of those like little projects where it's like, that. that's something we should probably think about doing. But we have so many of those that it's, I don't know which ones are going to happen and which ones aren't going to happen. Right now, I I on the prize of chapter three right now is what we're we're focused on, and like basically every um, after every chapter releases, I basically like leave the team alone for a month, other than people I need critically to help me with bug fixes. Like if there's like something, uh, you know, like a bug with an animation that I don't know how to fix, I have no choice but to like bug knee her about it or. Um, you know, sometimes like, uh, SAG who does most of our quest implementation, like I try and fix the bugs, but if he implemented it and I just don't understand something he did, I got to ask him. Mostly I leave everybody alone for like a month after we launch. Uh, and I take care of all the bugs myself because I don't want to, I, I like feel like I usually like in the last, uh, month, month and a half of development, like I'm really hardcore with bugging everybody and, and putting deadlines and stuff like guys we gotta have this done gotta have this done so then so we basically crunch for like a month and then i just leave everybody alone for a while and then after that i ask every individual person if they're interested in being involved in any future development so that way they have a time to, to they have an opportunity to gracefully exit without feeling like they abandon us um and uh i'm not sure if i'm gonna do that or not after chapter three because we have no you know we've talked like i think some folks are ready to move on um like, I would love a new challenge. Like, I would like to, you know, I, I have infinite more ideas we could do in Fallout 4, but, um, uh, like, I'm, I'm kind of interested in doing something new. So, uh, stuff like the Conquered characters and stuff, like, I don't know if they're going to happen or not. Like, but because Chapter 3 is so ginormous, like, I really haven't put much thought into, any real thought into it. Like, I, you know, I've talked it on this stream about how this is my last hoorah with Fallout 4, but, like... Uh, to be honest, I haven't really put serious thought into what I'm going to do next, so um, so I don't really know. Kilo, that makes sense. I have uncapped frames and have cinematic mode off, and it builds a plan layout very fast, like in 15 seconds. Yeah, that was the when. So that was why we built it on Workshop Frameworks layout system. Um, so when I developed the layout system, I worked with some other programmers to like really. Like we did a lot of code optimization and. Um, doing um, 
you know, te like stress tests on the engine to see what we could pull off. And some of the things that we were able to get the workshop framework system to do were just unbelievable. It was like, this is nuts how fast this can go. Um, and, uh, uh, and then we built the city, the city plan system on top of that. And yeah, when you cut all the bells and whistles, like you take away the flashy stuff and, um, and just build and like take away, you know, don't play any music, don't do any, um, you know, like some of the things that happen during cinematic mode are like the weather changes and we make the NPCs run faster. So it looks like they're, they're working and it's like, so it feels like a time lapse. Um, you cut all that stuff out and you just go straight layout bare bones. It's real fast. The code just goes nuts. Sonic Phil. Yes. Fallout for or fallout London. A couple of their coders got hired by Bethesda. I've heard. Yeah. It's, um, it looks like a pretty legit thing. Hopefully they, they are able to finish it. Um, but they didn't lose, they didn't lose enough folks that they can't finish it. Lonely dog. Another question. Sorry for three, three ones in a row. That's all right. You're one of the only people poke. You're, if you're the only one posting questions, you can, you can have all, all my time. Uh, sorry for three ones in a row. Thanks for answering them. And really cool of you. What's the ETA on chapter three? I heard it was this month from a few people. Is that true or not? So originally it was going to release in September or October. We were going to try and beat Starfield to market. And then when they delayed Starfield, we like slowed, slowed down. Um, because what ends up happening usually when we set ourselves a predetermined deadline, and this has happened with pretty much every release in SS2, is like I, I usually um, always push for, like I want to be releasing something every year because it keeps us motivated on the team. It keeps us, like you got to have some sort of deadline or you just flounder around and, and, and everyone procrastinates. Like it's just the nature of things. Or you feature creep forever. And those are the two things that I find happen with creatives, myself included. Um, but when Starfield was delayed, we basically like laid out our dream set of features and like, that's our target now. So, um, like if, if a, another Starfield launch date gets announced, then like, I will, I will, I will, uh, light a fire and we will get moving <laughs> a little quicker. But right now we're more focused on like, let's just get all these features in that we want and make them perfect. Uh, or I wouldn't say, I won't say perfect. We'll say we'll get them. Um, so that they are feature complete and as bug free as we can make them given the limited testing team we have, like a lot of stuff, it's almost impossible to find bugs until we get a wide scale view of things. Um, this is why I started doing public testing with all of our patches is because, uh, you know, seeing things in the wild with a bigger load order will identify a lot more problems than we can do in a controlled environment. So we're going to have, you know, we'll inevitably have some amount of bugs, but we're just trying to get the features out the door, how I envision them instead of like, like HQ, I think was the big catalyst for this is HQ came out very half baked uh, when we launched it. And it was because it was like, it was such this massive feature. I had no idea how many hundreds more hours was going to be required for development and the story was ready. So like we, we pushed HQ out too soon and I regret that. And so we're not going to do the same now that we have this blessing in disguise of Starfield being delayed, which you know, you may think, well, why, what do you care about Starfield? I'm like, well, because we want we 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 want to have a decent sized audience, and we know that many of you guys who love Fallout 4 are going to go play Starfield because you, like us, are addicted to the Bethesda gameplay loop. It's just too too fun, um, and so we don't want to be competing for your attention with with a new fancy AAA title. And we've seen over and over again every time Bethesda releases a new single player RPG the active daily player count of their previous one plummets. Um, and so the, uh, there, there is a, there is some minimum number of players that I, that I will, uh, uh, that I would want to play before I say it's not worth the amount of effort anymore. Um, and like, you know, we're not just doing this for the likes and clicks and, and audience, but there is a certain number. You know, I always tell people who tell me that that doesn't matter to them. I'm like, well, would you be okay if only one person downloaded your mod? And pretty much everybody says, well, no, that would feel crappy. <laughs> so it's like, well, then there's a bottom, right? There's a bottom threshold of where you're not going to feel good anymore about it. And so we don't want to see what that number is. Um, so at some point we got to move on from Fallout 4 and like at bare minimum, we don't want to be competing head to head with with Starfield. So, um, you know, that's going to be when we choose a deadline for sure. Um, or when it's done, like when, it, like right now we're operating on a, um, you know, I make sure I set myself personal deadlines to make sure I get certain features done in certain amounts of time. Cause I have a big list of features I want to get in, but otherwise we don't, we don't have it. I don't put, I don't push anybody on the team. Like I let them, everybody work at their own pace. Cause nobody's getting paid for this. Everybody 
is just doing this in their free time and I don't want anybody to burn out. So like I kind of like, ex again, exception being when we get, once we have a date and it's down to the last month or last month and a half, then I'll start being pushy with folks. But otherwise I just kind of let everybody go at their own pace. And so then, you know, things, I don't, I don't know how I couldn't possibly fathom a guess for how long it's going to take everybody to get their, their part done. Um, so I basically wait until I know how much I need, how much time I need left. And then I talk to everybody else on the team, see how much time they need left based on their pace. And we kind of collectively agree, okay, let's, let's make a push. We can do this in this amount of time. We'll cut whatever features we need to, to make that happen. Uh, and that's when we'll have a date. So right now, no date. I will say we do have our, the teaser trailer coming soon. That is almost done. Um, so I hope that we end up following a similar pattern we have done in the past. So those of you guys who have been following my pattern with SS1 and SS2 of our of the timelines of teaser to trailer to launch, I hope we can follow a similar pattern, but I, I can't guarantee it. So long, long answer to a simple question. Uh, I don't have a, a date, but I'm just trying to explain why, because I would love to have a date for you, but it's just not practical. Uh, Oscar Fry, how big of a super chat do I have to give you so that you will add buyable super mutant size clothing and armor for strong at the Fallon's, Fallon's department store in Concord? Ha! <laughs> um, it's funny you mentioned that. The, the, uh, uh, Biebs who does our, um, uh, outfit, this is like our outfit technical person, um, is a huge super mutant fan and I'm sure she would love to see more super mutant clothing in. But I think it comes down to just like a, a, a time time commitment. So don't be shocked if more slips in there at some point. I just, I, I can't commit for her because she's got her own stuff to do. Um, but I'm sure she would love to see it. So you're not alone in wanting more super mutant clothing. Monitor 42, is there any way to manually run the build limit checker? Any way to turn it off since it's never working for me? Um, there is a manual build limit checker in the city plan contest mod. There's a, there's a tool in there you can run. And that one, um, I think is far more accurate than what happens in workshop mode. Like the little, the little bar up in the top, right. Um, that is accurate if you're building vanilla structures, but it's wildly inaccurate with plots. And the, um, the, uh, the tool we created for the city plan contest in the holotape is way more accurate. So you can try that. Sonic Phil, uh, what is the main difference between SS2 Extended and SS2 Without Extended? Uh, SS2 Extended adds just a lot of extra content. So it adds um, a bunch of new dogs you can get. So it's like extra stuff you don't need, but it's just fun to have. It adds some new building plants. It adds, um, let me think, it adds, some settler, uh, adds one settler, and it will probably have more in the future that you can't recruit otherwise. Um, it adds... I'm trying to remember all the things it adds. Let me let me bring up the. Uh, bring this up. I'll move this over off screen. Just get it out of your guys' way. Uh, I gotta bring up the. The folder, and I can tell you better what is in SS2 extended because I've lost track of all the things that are in there. But it's become our basically like catch-all for now for any new content we want to add, um, that is not necessary for gameplay or the story but just adds something a little extra because we know xbox players are like maxed out oh it has um higher res textures in it for all of our stuff uh let's see it has um more more dogs more cats more flags there's a custom flag for each of the companions in there um let's see scrolling down through this list it has what's called face customization data, which is an optimization thing for custom characters that makes them load better. Uh, that data is very big in there and is all included in the extended ESM. So you'll get a little bit better performance playing with the extended, ironically, playing with more files to get better performance. Um, let's see, there are a bunch of alternate paintings that are injected into some of the leveled lists for um, that were done by, um, who were they done by? Um, the username had Myers in it. I can't remember the full username. My apologies. Um, there's a bunch of alternate art that will show up in painting leveled lists for the plots, for the random decorations. Um, just like a lot of extra stuff like that, like stuff that was like, this would be nice to have, but 
will is not necessary for um, Xbox players since they're so tight on space. And so by putting it in extended and not in the base, we don't have to have two copy. You know, we don't have to split Sims Elements 2 into two mod files. Uh, from this perspective, like I don't want to have to manage ss2.esm, which is the file name, and ss2.esm for Xbox. Like I don't want to have to have two files to manage. That would be a nightmare. I'm sure I'd make a lot of mistakes. So instead, we just have ss2 extended kind of fills that role. Uh, another one is uh, a lot of the outfits that we have, like the custom character outfits, you can only get the opposite sex version with extended. So, and that is relevant if you like using the camera system to collect outfits and you want to use them for your character, you're going to want to use extended to get access to the opposite sex version. And there'll be a lot more. So there's going to be a lot of stuff moving into extended. Like the two things, there's three things I can think of that are going to have to move into extended for us to fit chapter three on Xbox. One is going to be um, the color, the color skins for the buildings and not just the skins, but they're also used in some of the building plans. Let me see if I can find one that's using it. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen that, like, we added these a long time ago. Do we have any here? Where there's, like, different colored versions of this wood. It looks like it's, like, painted kind of like a messy yellow or a messy blue. And it's, like, intentionally, like, you know, it looks wastelandy. Um, all the textures that do that, those are going to get moved to extended. The uh, dynamic soundscape is going to have to get moved to extended. The holiday decorations are going to have to get moved to extended. Like, we have to move a ton of stuff in order to make room for Chapter 3. So extended is going to become kind of like the de facto like that's the, the director's cut of ss2 and that's why it's included by default with ss2 um one of the things we are going to do with this is something that some people i've seen have trouble installing ss2 because when you go to install it through vortex it tries to install extended and extended requires chapter two and that causes vortex to freak out um so one of the things we're going to do when uh chapter three comes out is I'm going, because the extended will start requiring chapter three, I'm going to make it a default download that comes with chapter three instead of with SS2, um, because then that'll eliminate that issue of people getting that warning, because I can't imagine, because chapter three is gonna require chapter two, so then it'll be like, now everything requires each other, so you won't even be able to, like the, the getting the error will make more sense. Like right now, installing SS2 and you don't have chapter two gives you an error, and that doesn't make any sense. Installing chapter two, and getting an error because you don't have chapter one makes sense, but so I don't know. That's a information for those of you guys who like to hang out on the forums. That will be useful for you to know that I know that that's been a common complaint, and and I do plan on fixing it. I just didn't want to have to fix it twice. Like I didn't want to have to move extended in as part of chapter two, and then move it again to be part of chapter three down the line as a default download. But highly recommend if you're on PC, you should probably play with extended. Lonely Doggo, is there any SS2 Discord server? I looked for one, for it and couldn't find one, even thought about making a fan one. Just uh, checking, is there one? Um, there are a couple. There is one for Patreon supporters. Um, there is one for people who are learning to mod or who are making add-on content for SS2. And then there is a fan-led server for people who enter the city plan contest. So those are the three Discord servers. There used to be a fan server for... Uh, uh, SS2 that was not like beyond that one that I, but I I didn't know much about it I just had heard about it and I think it got just it got taken down um, so that but there is no we don't do a public Discord server because public Discord servers the requirements Discord have on on uh, public servers is crazy like you're expected to like moderate heavily um, and like even like people in who join your server who are posting like really awful stuff. Um, can get your server taken down if you don't moderate it. And like, it's hard enough to moderate a small server. I don't want to deal with moderating a giant open server for everybody. Like, I think it's crazy that people do that. Um, like open ser open public Discord. And the movement of game companies from like forums to public Discords is insane to me because it's they're totally different resources. Like forums are way better for asynchronous communication. Like it's like, hey, I got a question but the developers maybe aren't on, or maybe the developers are busy developing the mod and they can't take my question right now in real time. So like forums make way more sense for that that relationship. And so I've never understood, the, like the Discord's great for people helping each other, but um, but the other problem is, is then, so forums can work for that too, and at least forums are searchable later. Like 
on the internet. Like people can Google for a problem and come across the forum discussion and find their solution. So I, I'm, I like forums for, for public discourse. I, I think this, this move to discord, I think is a mistake. Um, that, and I think even if people are seeing it, like you saw discord release forums recently, like, or, or their, their equivalent of forums where it's like, uh, you can set up separate channels that act more like a forum. The problem is, is that's not searchable on a search engine. So I think it's like a, it's just a clear downgrade to forums. Oscar Fry, I'm not kidding. I have an American Express black credit card with no limit. Uh, oh, you, oh, you want to just pay for, well, talk to Biebs if you want to pay for that. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to push it. Mount 142, I'm using the contest holotape and it's better. Can I turn off the auto recalculate that regularly fills the build limit? Nothing more can be built till I scrap something. Um, I'm not aware of an auto recalc that changes your build limit. I'm not aware of any such thing. Like the only thing I, I'm aware of with that is when you first arrive in a settlement that's flagged as part of the contest, it should reset it. But other than that, it shouldn't be. I don't know what's resetting it for you. Uh, Rick Adsley, I heard that the owner of the unofficial SS2 discourse ever got banned from the forums, got pissed off, and yeeted the Discord. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, sounds like free real estate for me to make one out of boredom. <laughs> yeah, I, will, I mean, like, uh, you know, we, we get nervous about uh, the... Uh, Just make sure it does that it's not insinuated that's the official server. Like I don't want to have any responsibility. Like I said, like I've I've seen people's Discord communities get like just dissolved because uh, they were too open, and I don't want that to happen. Like I I, I hate I hate all of the the requirements of moderation uh, on the internet. Like it's it sucks. Um, I get why you know you like it's, things can get out of hand pretty quick if you just like leave it open. Um, I mean even our our chat here with uh, the um, what do you call it the porn bots like if we didn't bot if we didn't block those it get pretty out of hand pretty quickly. Modern photo doesn't change the maximum build limit, but recalculates how much has been used by things and plots. Hmm. Yeah, I don't. I, again, I'm not aware of anything that's automatically doing that. Like that would be recalculating how much is being used. Like unless you're running, like as far as I know, that's all done by running tools. Like the only, um, like when you build plots or when city plans upgrade, they will update how much their usage is. But that's it. That's the only, the only auto I'm aware of. Um, and like you know, to get around that, it would just be just set your build limit ridiculously high. Uh, Aiden M, I'm new to PC and modding. Was wondering, uh, using MO2, do I download the SS2 update and replace the old files? Thanks in advance, and also absolutely love this mod. Thank you for your work. Um, yeah, you just download and replace the old files. Yes, for sure. The problem with mod managers is often they keep a copy in a virtual directory. Um, they keep a copy in a virtual directory of your mods, and sometimes you have to go wherever that is and replace them there. Um, so I've, I've quit using mod managers cause they cause too many problems when I'm developing. Um, I'm sure I'm going to, when I get back to playing with a giant load order, I'm not going to want to do that manually and I'll have to do it again. But I've been, I've been without a mod manager for over a year now. Um, so I'm not the best person to ask about that, unfortunately. But, all right, guys, it is almost 1230. I, I realize I'm, I'm getting sleepy because I'm kind of slur my words a bit and getting distracted by things like random power wires. I saw myself all of a sudden start messing with power wires. I'm like, okay, I'm getting tired. Uh, so I'm going to call it for the night. Uh, happy Thanksgiving again to my fellow Americans. I will uh, see you guys next Wednesday and we will continue this easy mode playthrough and show you guys some more of uh, how quickly you can kind of run through and do stuff when you turn off all of the, the, the mechanics that make it challenging. <laughs> so, all right, guys, uh, we'll catch you next week.